three, two, one. You don't know what I can do, what I'm going to do, or what I'm going to be. I'm good. I have good things and you don't know about. I'm going to be something. That was a quote. It was from Boogie Nights. It was a Boogie Woogie movie. I'm Adam from OMS. This is Sardonic Ast. From Boogie Woogie. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm Ralph from Movie Maker. From, oh, well, Ralph Seppi from Ralph from Movie Maker. Uh, yeah, and I'm Alex from IHG. And... Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, an interesting quote to begin. A bit of Marky Mark to get us going on this, yeah, this fine evening in the UK as I'm recording. Mm-hmm. There are so many good ones. Yeah, so many yeah. good quotes. I was kind of in a hurry. Picked. I already realized there were better ones I could have started with, but I was like, ah, fuck it. I've so many committed. awesome ones. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> yeah. What was it? Oh, well, I'll bring it up later. It's in my notes. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's many, especially from Marky Mark. Yeah, especially yes. from him. He's yes. really like great in the movie. Oh, yeah, we could talk about that later. Uh, but first, we got some movie news. Uh, I don't know how much oh, we can no. add to this, but... Uh, <laughs> the, What's uh, happening? Fill me in. Bob Iger, the old Disney CEO, oh, yeah. is back. This. Bob Chapek yeah. is out. Uh, so they... <laughs> he was the CEO since February 2020. And okay. uh, now Iger's back, and I don't even understand what the basis for this decision is, but it's something that people are talking about. <laughs> Do you guys know anything about yeah. it? Yeah, what, what has even changed with Disney in that time? It got woke. I wish I knew more about it. It got woke. <laughs> <laughs> they made Pinocchio. <laughs> they made a bunch of, a bunch of stuff like that. <laughs> they made a bunch of bullshit. Well, that's what I'm imagining is going to be like kind of the scapegoat, right? Do you think like there's definitely one hundred percent there's well, some I don't know. Who the fuck there's some reactionary do commentary channels that are gonna say like thankfully thankfully the old CEO is back and Disney won't be woke anymore or something, right? Surely someone has to have that perspective. Oh well yeah, some idiot will say that, but I don't think it's actually gonna have some and like any impact on Disney for real. I think they're still gonna make the live action remakes because they do well. Yeah. Like I don't think I, any of that like did, did they, did, were they making those live action remakes before yeah. twenty twenty? The Lion King the twenty nineteen yeah. was before twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, so no shit. They, you know, that's just what they're gonna do from now on. Um and as long as it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't make money, then they won't do it. The Pinocchio movie being terrible, like one of you said, that's like a good like marker for like these kind of falling off and like the public guy anyway, like people not not, not liking them. That movie has fucking terrible ratings. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. I was looking the other day; it's like two point something. <laughs> yeah. Um, as, as long as they don't make movies like Pinocchio, they'll be fine. Apparently, I'm just like pulled up an article about it because I really, I don't really know much about this this situation. It seems to do something with the the shares falling by forty percent this year, and something to do with this like transition into Disney Plus and trying to run that whole mm. new sector. So I, I guess I can understand from that kind of angle because it has been like weird the past few years ever since the like COVID stuff with like some full movies just go straight on Disney Plus. Others are going into theaters. How are they recouping these investments? Like hmm. it's just a, a strange situation for a business to be in, I guess. And maybe uh, hmm. this old fella didn't have True. what it took to transition. Yeah. So about the stocks. And once they announced this, Always. the stocks the stocks actually went up once they announced that that's so funny. Was changing. Yeah. Pre market opening. <laughs> it's like 10 percent. yeah with no clear outlining of what would be different yeah or any plans the stock price goes up yeah jumped up 10 percent, like pre the market opening i think today that's so funny that's uh, yeah that is funny it's all oh, like yeah. uh it's like wolf of wall street fairy, fairy dust <laughs> that whole scene mm. it's yeah, just like true. what people think is like going to happen. Yeah. Like how much faith people have in like things. The perception of a company evaluates its stock, not necessarily what the company is or what its actual prospects are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's how film is too. It's all speculative. It's crypto before crypto. Yeah. Just entirely speculative markets. <laughs> mm-hmm. With some basis in reality, but not entirely. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, well, that was about it for that, because, uh, yeah, but it, <laughs> people yeah. are talking about yeah, it, but Disney, man. I don't know if it yeah. really means anything, so. <laughs> oh, man, Disney. <laughs> yeah, woo, go Disney. Speaking of Disney, the Disney killer movie came out. We all watched it. It's called Black Adam. It's just the, now the DC universe is better because Black Adam came out. The hierarchy is going to change, yeah. So what was the context of that? Was that like one of their tweets or like what? why do people quote that? The hierarchy? I, I saw it as like The Rock trying to hype up the, oh, yeah, this character that, let's admit, like no one, like who actually knows who this character is, you know? It's not like Superman. <laughs> it's, it's stretching it with like Shazam and it's like Shazam's like arch nemesis mm. character yeah. getting his own movie with The Rock playing him. Oh, so yeah. I, I don't know if it's true, but how it comes across to me is kind of like just one of those vehicle movies where it's like... <laughs> we've got the rock attached to this project let's just give him whatever he wants yeah we, we'll change every element of the story just to kind of make him happy and be this almost like a puff piece as a movie yeah. for like the rock <laughs> the like, goodest yeah. bad guy <laughs> That's how it feels. <laughs> yeah exactly where it's like it's the yeah. venom problem again where it's like yeah we so you're not going to have the the good guy character and try and base it around this villain and instead of leaning into the fun that could be had with like an over-the-top villain main character they just kind of make them good guys or try and explore the gray area to like little effect. But man, this movie yeah. is all over the place. I thought oh my this God, was like a yeah. flash into the past. This was like what was <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. It's a total mess. Like I kept thinking like, is this like a, it's like Dwayne Johnson running for office. Is this yeah. like a presidential like campaign ad or something? <laughs> this is like the whole movie. Like you could lead us. And he's like, yeah. and he's like sitting on that chair or whatever. Oh my God. It's hilarious. It's, it's so dumb and over the top. Yeah. I, I, I you know, I loved it. <laughs> I probably enjoy it more than you guys. It's uh yeah. I'm also it, being sarcastic. It's it's yeah. very reminiscent of like just messy Snyder movie shit. You know? Which which is funny because like before <laughs> what was it? Like before the film's released, it was announced that the the DCEU is like changing direction away from that now. So <laughs> this is like the swan song yeah. or like the Death rattle. Yeah, you know, they, they let him do his own thing. Uh, I don't know if you know who, this director. It's oh, fuck. It. I, I gotta look I'm up his look name, but it's right the guy now. who directed like a bunch of like Liam Neeson movies. Like, yeah, Jean okay. Colette Sarah. What's he okay, done? Oh, yeah. yeah, the director of Orphan. Orphan, <laughs> Unknown, The Shallows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just yeah, a bunch so of bullshit. Gonna... House of Wax. Uh, uh, unknown. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like a bunch of Liam Neeson shit too, like the commuter unknown nonstop. Yeah, like I've seen those. And so, yeah, it's Nothing like. Nothing particularly it doesn't, good. Yeah, exactly. It's just like a work for hire kind of thing. It's like, it's not like incompetent. Like it kind of feels polished. I mean, there's times where it doesn't. There's times where I definitely didn't like. I mean, especially like the acting in this movie. I'm like, holy shit, dude! It's like really bad at times. <laughs> like the kid in this. <laughs> I, oh, I'm always yeah, like, he, he, was... <laughs> he was bad. I wasn't prepared. Like, I wasn't mentally prepared for the movie just being like about this annoying kid and his parents, basically. And Black yeah, Adam. Is, I'm just like, saying they, they have this yeah. weird like Terminator Two relationship, where he's like, oh, you. You're yeah. bad guy, and you don't oh, know. Yeah. I'm going to teach you what, what, what going for. quotes are that you should say before you that, kill people. It's like the thumbs up. Yeah, trying to get some like, of that kind yeah. of Marvel humor, and yeah, that's the weird thing though is that it's not just about that. Like, there's if it was just about that, then fine. But it's also like, oh, um, we're also going to shove in the the Justice Society and kind of do this like X Men thing and establish this whole like cast of good guy characters they're in mini kind of avengers like team and have that be what like a third of the movie if not more it's like a whole element they're trying to play with and yeah. just fall into that trap these movies have been doing time and time and time again where it's too many characters they're trying to establish in one movie and like all the all the lessons learned they yeah. haven't like yeah on. Like, dr fade it's too much stuff the Adam dude, Adam yeah. Smasher Doctor and whatever. Strange, Macro Deadpool. <laughs> Do like, Doctor Str Yeah, exactly. That's what I referred to them as in like my quick review oh, yeah. I made. It's literally um, yeah, it's yeah. like we're already familiar with these characters. Like it doesn't even matter at this point if they appeared in DC comics before. Like you're it's it's too similar, it's too familiar, you know? Like, there's already an established universe doing the same shit. And it's just like, okay, well, that's 
that's too familiar. Like, who cares? You're not showing yeah. anything new. Yeah, because that's always been like a Marvel DC thing. It's like they both both universes have just like analogous characters who are like might as well be the same th like plug-in type thing. But yeah. This is the first time I've seen it used as kind of like a shorthand to try and like <laughs> imply a bunch of history and whatnot. And it just doesn't work, <laughs> especially when they're trying to pull it. If they're using it for humor, then fair enough. If it's just for like throwaway gags, like a Deadpool type thing, like featuring the X-Men, whatever. But if it's, if they're trying to have like dramatic moments actually like mean something, have like that some do emotion, not or... work in this movie. No, because you don't they care. Just feel so funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't give a issue. shit about these characters at all. Right. It's just so cartoonish. Can someone remind me what the element was called in this? I remember it had a very silly name. I just don't oh, Eternium. Eternium. Yeah, I was going to ask if you had your, oh, that was um, your stocks fuck. in Eternium. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <bought up>. yeah. <laughs> it's my new crypto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's basic. Yeah, that was very like Avatar. But like Black Adam's not in it for such a long time. It's mostly focused on like those if, like yeah. normal human characters and like their perspective. These annoying people. <laughs> it is it is like Terminator it's a mom and, and her yeah. son yeah and, like, and they have that relationship like, yeah. and he's like this super we weapon save from the world. another time and the kid right. has to like teach him things and they have this like weird relationship and yeah it, they were borrowing a yeah. lot from T2 exactly and I don't know if we're in spoilers or whatever yes, like, the please. shit they do at the ending yeah just spoilers yeah, yeah. Everybody. They, ju they just go all the way to the ending with that bullshit for like the Terminator stuff and at the end it's like we got we gotta lead an uprising. Like the kid is like talking at room volume oh, yeah. to like a crowd Thank of people. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's he can't even I'm raise like, his oh, Adam's voice. gonna love this. Oh god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like, oh everybody, we gotta like uh, rise up and you know whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck he's saying. Yeah, we gotta it do sucks. it and beat the bad yeah. guys. Everybody, yeah. like, how can you even hear him? You can't. <laughs> and then a bunch of zombies come out and they fight him with fucking, I don't know, swords. They actually did it. They did the laser in the sky thing. I haven't seen a superhero movie do that for a while. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, so the cliche. The goes up and, like, all the zombies. <laughs> the or villain's literally, up. it's Satan. Like, it's yeah, just, it's like, like, a, a demon guy. devil <laughs> with fucking yeah. horns and it's, like, red skin. Like, it's it's the devil. Like, they made the devil the villain. It's really weird. Yeah. You couldn't have made him anyone else. I was for sure thinking um, before the movie anyway they were gonna make Doctor Fate like like one of those like good villain or like he's a good guy turned villain at some point but that would have been interesting so they didn't do that it's like went this other direction it's like okay it's like this random dude who wants like that artifact or whatever probably some you know cliche thing yeah because there's that yeah. whole like historical angle because. God, oh my god, it's trying to do so much. The, the first act of this movie is like, God, it was fucking boring. It's got like three intros. Yeah, it like yeah. starts with the like... I was so checked out for so much of oh, it. <laughs> yeah, you're right, yeah. It, it's like fucking Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah. It's like two pro -op. It was like so truncated. Like the movie, like it starts, right? And it's like 5,000 years ago, or whatever. And it's like this period piece thing. And it's like this exposition dump. And then it starts again. And it's like current day. And then it starts again when it's establishing like this X Men thing with these like DC X Men like Hawkman shit. And it's just like, where are you going with this? Like, what what are you trying mm -hmm. to achieve with this? Uh, nothing is the answer. It's just like the most expected, like just put plug in the puzzle pieces type like narrative for one of these superhero movies. Like algorithm, like it just feels like an algorithm put it together, you know? Yeah. Well, apparently, from what I know, like Dwayne Johnson's been signed on to be Black Adam for like a really long time. That's I think for like a decade or so. Yeah. So they've like been trying to make this movie for a long time. So it's like they're kind of just obligated to make it at some point. And now it's like I guess it's the time with like Shazam being out and them wanting to like push Shazam. This is, could be like the villain. But was it was it you, Alex, who mentioned like some bullshit where like Dwayne Johnson didn't want Shazam in the movie? Yeah, also, yeah, that, that's what I was reading. Ego, I wasn't interested in having Shazam in the movie, even though it would have solved a bunch of issues with the movie. movie. Then, you, yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't <laughs> have to establish yeah. like a bunch of good guys because you'd have Shazam. The main character being like the kid could have been the kid from Shazam. Then you got like a dynamic there. I, I, I don't know. That would be better that than this. Been, yeah, you know? a little right. bit more interesting. And it's yeah. the same reason, like, you know, he doesn't lose the fight in the Fast and Furious movies, Dwayne Johnson, where, like, 
you know, like they have that written in their contract. They, like, it's a bunch of big dudes who fight, and they just don't ever lose a, you know, a battle or anything. <laughs> I've mentioned this before, but like the overwhelming amount of DC movies just forget to be fun, and Shazam is a movie that yeah. didn't forget to be fun. And then same with obviously the Suicide Squad. So like James Gunn, you know, the, his his new direction is obviously going to take it into a more fun place, hopefully. But it's it's crazy that at this stage <laughs> in this universe, like we've already established we're changing direction. And yet they're releasing this film that's making like ev- it, it's this perfect example of everything that's wrong with the DC EU. DCU, DCU, mm-hmm. whatever they're calling it now. It's just it, yeah, it's too Snydery. Yeah, way it's too, too Snyder. dark. Like right. and there's things that on paper you would assume are trying to be done in the film for comedic purposes, but they still manage to have this like really weirdly serious tone in the soundtrack the entire time, and so it's just like what are you trying to be? Uh-huh. And then everything's way too dark visually, and it's just this gigantic mishmash of conflicting tones where it seems like nobody working on the movie had any idea what they wanted it to be. Like they, they had no vision of the yeah. finished product or they had conflicting visions. Every person working uh-huh. on it. It's like they filmed a movie that was almost trying to be more funny. And then someone decided in the editing room, like, okay, no, we're going to darken everything. We're going to add really serious movie or sorry, music. And this is just going to be like a serious, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. epic, cool, fucking, like, slow-mo, kills like, badass superhero movie yeah. and not some goofy yeah. thing. And then you get shots where he's like, <laughs> like, he's Kool-Aid manning through the wall at like two feet per hour. Like this, <laughs> it's, it, like Kool-Aid it's like Man. a family guy skit where he's like <laughs> slowly hovering yeah. through the wall and then boom, like gigantic. Well, yeah. like, that's, okay. like, that's like the comedic relief for the movie. Yeah, it's like Dwayne like, Johnson doing that kind of shit. The, that quick shot of him uh, like skidding across the ground on his face and stuff, and it's like, but that's that's during a seriously toned scene where it, it's it's not like satire, it's not like this. The yeah. music is to to make fun of films like this. It's still played off like it's it's its own product, not making fun of other things, right? So it's so confusing and conflicting. Uh huh. I do like the serious tone things. Like, I just saw Black Panther, Wakanda, Forever, whatever. Mm. And yeah, that's like, a, again, the director had a vision and it was a little more, I guess the word dramatic, but it was well done. It was like, still had elements or of fun. It was interesting. Recently with DC themselves, like the Batman, Joker, like, if we're yeah. talking tone, they, they were yeah. consistent, consistently dark. And it, you know, it didn't like betray itself or be this weird. I was cringing like the, with the music, especially when they were playing like that Kanye <laughs> song and all this like hype man kind of music. Oh yeah, the soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Right, that's something I didn't mention. But yeah, yeah, the soundtrack of this movie is fucking bizarre. Mr. Black Hitler, yeah, especially <laughs> yeah, especially with all the controversy with Kanye recently. That's it's like so weird they left that in the movie. It's like you could have because that's a scene like you easily could have swapped out any song and just yeah, like put another easily. fucking rap yeah. song in there. They or only pop chose song. because of that but one yeah, line they, in that song that like says every superhero oh, yeah. needs his theme music. That's yeah, the only yeah, exactly. reason. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you could just throw in any R and B song. That like kind of fits, yeah. so it would, it would work. Like they had about, the yeah. it's Paint just, It Black it's so song, dumb. and I could tell that that was oh, yeah, happening that just was through dumb. like this. They were kind of like doing a rendition in the score, and I was like, uh oh, uh oh, and then they started playing it. I was like, wow, just because the name Black Adam, and that's that's it. That's the yeah. why. That's why you have yeah. the song in there, and that's the only reason. It's kind yeah. of annoying. yeah. It's very surface level. Oh, what God. is this full metal jacket? I mean, this is a yeah. They use that. I am still consistently surprised just as time goes on that I continue seeing movies that do the lower left corner bank gothic font of like <laughs> the location <laughs> yeah, with yeah. that computer noise. Yeah. I'm like, this this feels like 25 years ago. <laughs> like, you know, mm-hmm. like, why are we still yeah. doing this? And, you know, I don't always, I don't always hate that in like every instance, but I feel like you should use yeah, a different font movie, and a different bad. noise. At this point, yeah, there's other ways to do. They were it. definitely going around a lot too. Yeah, we'll just do what. Um, speaking of like DC movies, uh, like James Gunn's uh, The Suicide Squad, like had a bunch of like creative, like kind of diegetic title cards like baked in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have oh, yeah. to just like put a stupid little bit of text with the yeah. Yeah, find a creative way to do it. Yeah, it's like text on a beach, and then like yeah. the the wave like washes away. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, 
Exactly. Don't just be lazy. Yeah, I don't it. always hate it. Uh huh. And yeah, it's just jumping around so much. Yeah, the pacing is like really bad, and it takes so long for Black Adam to show up. And you know, once Dwayne Johnson does show up, like I do like him. I do think there's like times where his cares because charisma like kind of yeah i was gonna say like charismatic personality or something i guess it's the same thing but like it does come out like in like tiny moments but like he's mostly really dour in the movie he's mostly yeah just like kind of floating through walls and like (laughs) acting very stoic and stern and it's like really boring he's like really boring in this movie i'm like that's such a shame because they could have done something there they could have brought out like some kind of sarcastic fun like you do see in the Fast and Furious movies. I don't like the movies he's in usually, but I do think he's usually like one of the best parts of the movies he's in. Um, he can be fun. Yeah. He is in good stuff. I just mean like those Fast and Furious movies. I don't think he's uh, been in a good movie, right? Unless, no, well, I guess I could think of one, maybe, but it's it's kind of hard for me. I guess I could look at yeah, my other ones. Yeah, <laughs> it's difficult with him. Yeah, in the Fast and Furious movies, he's like one of the best parts. I'm like, okay, he's fun in those. But, yeah, he works in those movies because like yeah. they, they, they they like almost know what they are a bit more. Like they, they don't even try <laughs> more jo- to go above yeah, a certain more level. Jokey. I feel like w- when you're playing with characters like this, you've got to have a certain level of self awareness. You know, like with, I, I just kept getting. <laughs> I was chuckling to myself at like this the hawk character. And like how restrictive like that mask was, and you could just see yeah. his eyes, like, just like trying to act through them. And it's just like, uh, yeah. Like, that there are certain writers, there are certain that filmmakers sucks. who could take some of these characters and find a fun slant, put Black Adam up against Shazam, and then you have the stoic against the more comedic, and then you have something there. Not like, man, <laughs> fighting a demon and just turning into <laughs> the just same old shit we've been seeing for the past like 20 years with these movies like you want yeah. some to- tongue and cheek the villain from the king james bible <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh, it's so frustrating so so just boring how can how can a movie like like this like it's just pure effects and spectacle and action it's just so it's so fucking boring it it numbs you oh yeah it numbs you and i was just like kind of by the end of it, I was just like not even really absorbing the film, and uh, my friend Shay that I watched it with uh, pointed out <laughs> to me on the car ride back home. He's like, "Wow, they <laughs> they really kind of hyped up this this like demon army, and then you punch them and they disintegrate. They were like <laughs> less dangerous than <laughs> yeah, like a pack of chihuahuas. The townspeople, like, yeah, <laughs> like maybe yeah, the exactly. mom was like kicking their ass, and you know, like." What was the point? We have to fight everybody. We have to fight them. (laughs) That scene was so bad. (laughs) That whole ending part. Yeah. Holy shit. If you didn't even like kill Satan, if that's his army, like what? Uh What's the big deal? (laughs) I forgot about that whole convoluted thing where Black Adam didn't show up. Like it seems like everybody had it under control. So. Yeah, basically, right? It's just like, or the army could have came in. Yeah, uh, the the Doctor Fate thing. They throw out all that bullshit where he's like, "I'm gonna die later," <laughs> so he like sees the future or whatever. Oh, yeah. And then yeah, that that hawk guy, yeah. like, it's so fucking convoluted what they try to do with that. He like kills himself. Like Doctor Fate goes in. <laughs> yeah, it's so dumb and predictable. And they're so uncreative of like, so the, the the main character is this like he's basically Superman, right? He's he's basically invincible. He's bulletproof. Yeah, he can fly around. His only weakness is like a, a mineral. <laughs> um, it's like the same thing. Oh yeah. Um, but what? So they got to come up with these like hurdles for him to overcome, which manifests as like video game ass motorbikes that like fly around that are powered <laughs> by it. That, that's like just Hulk Ultimate Destruction, like. Just- Oh my shit! It's like so goofy. <laughs> yeah, it's like a fucking video game. I mean, it's awful. <laughs> yeah. It's so dumb. It was very video. The CG game-y. is really fucking bad. Yeah, it's just so much of it. It's way too much. It doesn't look as polished as the Marvel stuff. It's way too like yeah. It's like the whole movie looked ugly. The whole movie was gray. It's just so gray and ugly. Someone left a comment on my... I, I recently reacted to the uh, Avatar 2 trailer 2 on my yeah. highlights channel, and mm. someone left a comment that was really interesting because it really put things into perspective of like them just saying, this is... Avatar is the type of movie that you get when you allow uh, visual effects artists and animators the time they need to actually finish and complete their projects with 
the resources mm. that they need. Right? Because the effects in those movies look <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, that movie looks much better. Oh, it looks no amazing. shit. Just from the trailer. Right? And, and, and yeah. in all of these other films, it seems like it, it would be possible to have things that look lo- that great, but it's consistently, we hear time and time again, animators and visual so effects out. artists are just treated like shit. They're forced to crunch and work a lot of hours, like even without pay, sometimes without credit, like, and just these yeah. unrealistic deadlines yeah. and just like constricting the, the quality of the art. Uh, fuck, yeah, it's really assembly disappointing. Line nature where like it, let's be real like the majority of like the big superhero movies on this scale they might as well be animated movies like how they would many look shots better if they have? were like yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah. at least you, you might have a spider verse thing where you can have some style and it'd be like a tonal thing and a like yeah. expressive thing where you feel like some voices uh-huh. are coming through but it's so much is lost through this like just <laughs> mess of cg shit where yeah. it's not like an avatar where you feel like yeah this is like james cameron's ideas <laughs> and story and like proficiency shining <laughs> through like it's, it's just it does just feel like a bunch of anime it's just like bashing like uh-huh. action figures together <laughs> yeah it feels like uh-huh. this movie was written by a fucking child honestly <laughs> like and then you hit the helicopter where bam boom like that's yeah. what i felt the entire time it can't be cg the nerds need to see dwayne johnson in the suit they need to see yeah, it, with fe- their eyeballs. it feels like it's overcompensating trying to be too cool i don't know if i've seen a superhero <laughs> movie like yeah. this since aquaman where it's like <laughs> We know this is kind of lame, and we're like, have to really like, okay, we're putting the rock in there because we know everyone loves the rock, and he's like a macho guy. He's huge. He's strong. <laughs> Everyone's gonna love it just for these reasons, and it's just like it comes across the total inverse to me. It's like <laughs> hilariously <laughs> lame. <laughs> yeah, going back to the point of like, he just fucking kills people, Black Adam. He's just like in the opening action sequence, so he's introduced or whatever. He's like kills like a whole room of bad guys. It's like br- absolutely brutal. I'm like, damn. Yeah, I was what hoping the fuck? for more of that. I was hoping they were going to lean yeah. into that more. Because I like, could you see you actually doing something a bit more fun with that. I could like something like that, but it's just the way the movie handled it, it was so silly. It's like again, what are you doing with this universe? Because Batman is kind of against that. It, it's just so weird where this movie stands, um, and it is tied into like Peacemaker too. There is like a a character oh, that shows up, yeah, and that, it's the same character from freaking suicide squad the suicide squad you know the james gunn version it's like one of the people like in the office you know in the oh, control really? center okay. with waller yeah, i haven't seen yeah the one who's like married to james gunn okay <laughs> yeah so they're trying to build out a universe over here i think her they're name's hawthorne and like in the in the universe or whatever i think her name's okay. hawthorne yeah they're trying to like expand it out but it's like yeah so that's all connected to like the suicide squad but like, is that connected to like you know batman versus superman or is that like not you know they all kind of do their own thing it is ultimately. really difficult to keep track of like what is what in this universe oh it's yeah bloody it's like almost place. impossible at this point it might be better to like blandify it a bit just so it's a little more consistent because we're going from like Zack Snyder shit to <laughs> Patty Jenkins and what she did and yeah and who who did Aquaman oh uh uh Wan James yeah Wan. James Wan yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. no if they did lean more into like the opposite Marvel like they were finding success with the Batman with yeah I think that's what they're trying movies. to do yeah well they're trying to do everything <laughs> well yeah that too they're trying to give each one like a bit of personality but like the Marvel ones, they're like, people say like, oh, they're bland or whatever. But I'm like, okay, at least they're like a bit more consistent when you there's, watch yeah, them. Yeah, there's a consi- at least yeah. a consistency there. Yeah, um, they are stylized. Yeah. Adam, that tweet you put in the uh, in the group <laughs> chat, um, I'd forgotten about that. That's, that's uh, funny. Which one? Um, I'll just read it. Yeah, I feel please. like the critics who gave Black Adam low scores are the kind of people who sit around drinking wine while listening to fancy music and saying that movies are art. <laughs> yeah, um, well, that is yeah, so true. That was on Twitter. People who give Black Adam low scores think that movies are art. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> like, yeah. okay, I love the self awareness, the unintentional self awareness here. And uh, you, I, we're not going to yeah. say who the guy is, obviously, but like no. their bio is like. They they're an owner of like a geek culture like comic book thing, and it's like okay, buddy. Yeah, we're so you can still enjoy it, man. Oh yeah, I don't want if he enjoys it, I love it. Like please, power to you, please enjoy it. But it's funny that people just refuse to accept that like other people can have a different experience with art. Yeah, 
Uh, but I guess this person doesn't think it's art. It's I don't know what he thinks it is. I don't know what he thinks a film is, if not art. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy because like a lot of things like this, like the people's response to Suicide Squad, like uh, Angry Joe, like subtweeted me. <laughs> he was like really pissed really? off that I get. Well, yeah, because of my Suicide Squad review. He was like really, really mad at me and tweeted with me about me without mentioning. The ori- sorry, the original one or the. The original when one. When we yeah. say Suicide Squad. Yeah. Okay, okay. The yeah. one, yeah. And it's just like, it's so obvious that there's certain people where, like, they don't see films as art and they just watch these movies as a vehicle to justify their obsession over, like, comic book characters and these action figures that they've loved since they were a child. And they're like, but this... I like this action figure and it's in the, mo- it's in the movie. That's therefore the movie's awesome sort of thing, right? Yeah. It's like, I don't know what... <laughs> like standard you have the few like rare genuine like comic book fans who like really love like the specific run of black adam and seeing him on screen is like tickling a certain <laughs> part of their brain it's like oh i've, I've always dreamed of seeing him yeah. on the big screen like yeah i'm sure those people are out there but yeah like i always dreamed of fighting him or him fighting satan <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm weird. sure it's in the comics somewhere, man. But uh, yeah. I actually have a tweet as well from The Rock himself. That oh, was please, quite yeah. funny. He's always about funny. About this damn movie. So IGN posted like a like a box <laughs> office update about Black Panther, saying it's earned over 400 million um, and that it's overtaken Black Adam. Um, to which Dwayne replied to the tweet saying, crying emoji, what a neutral post. I love competing, but IGN, you guys are in the biz with us. There's no competition with the established global brand of Black Panther compared to Black Adam and JSA, who a year ago no one had even heard of. No need to knock us, we're new babies and have to grow. (laughs) <laughs> Can you link me this? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> it's that's nuts. bizarre. New it's like, babies. What, that's a, he, does he is, feel like like his masculinity has been challenged with this? Why is he go? like? What's the what's uh, the point of weird. mentioning Black Panther? <laughs> like, it's weird to like bring that in. <laughs> yeah, the... it's not your movie. Oh, yeah. here we go. He's responding to. Okay, yeah, there we go. So the two movies are out at the same time, and he's responding to a tweet of them comparing box office numbers. Uh, it's not a big deal. I mean, I don't know why he even needed to respond to that, honestly. He, <laughs> he didn't need to respond well, to look, that. Well, yeah. look, okay. Yeah. It makes him look like he's, like, embarrassed. Oh, he is. <laughs> like, look at, the literally, oh, the, yeah. first, the first <laughs> character he types is laughing crying emoji, which is the most insecure thing you can possibly ever oh, type. Oh, come on. As fuck. It literally is. It's like... The entire point of using the crying laughing emoji is just to say, I'm not upset. Look at look at the facial expression that I I, I care that you care that uh, that you know that I'm doing the cr- lying crafting. Uh, sorry, <laughs> crying laughing. And that is the opposite <laughs> of being upset. Like every single time that's ever been used, it's been like that. Like no one's actually ever been like crying and laughing. It's, they've, they've just been crying when they use that shit. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's so obvious. Well, yeah, when yeah. I first read it, I thought it was like just one of the string of impersonation thingies with this. Oh, fucked yeah. Up. The verification thing is on Twitter. That's man. so it's, funny. No, it's, it's real. You can search it up. Mm. <laughs> I wouldn't say DC is a baby at this point either. Yeah. It's been around for a while. Yeah, that's the thing. You'd think after like how many movies have they made? It must be, must be over 10, oh. 15. They've been around like almost a, as long like a, as there's no excuse, Marvel has. Like, these movies are yeah. huge. They're, there's a huge, like, hungry audience for <laughs> superhero movies. It seems like he's just like trying to cope on that one. Yeah, I just don't know what they're what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> but did they expect this to be like a Fast and Furious type, like billions? I don't know the what they were office? trying to they do. They must with have. This. They must have thought yeah. the Rock would be able to power through and. And like, how's this gonna up. tie in? Like, is he gonna fight Superman or is he gonna fight? Just say how well, yeah, like, I suppose we should mention that because like, that's, that's the tease in the in the like oh, yeah. credits. I stayed for Henry that. Cameron. I'm like, oh, that was oh, so predictable. Yeah. That was like the most predictable thing. I'm like, oh, I gotta stay for the post credit. Let me guess, Superman could show some. <laughs> it was, was so weird. I was like, is this a twist? Like, we know he's in the same yeah. universe. It was announced. <laughs> yeah, it was announced in the news that like he's <laughs> back as Superman. That's I'm like, so yeah, funny. I know this. Why would yeah. they announce it before the end of the trailer? That would have been built more hype for this movie. People would have been talking about it. Yeah. yeah. People are like, shh, don't spoil it. I'm like, it was in the news that he's back as Superman. Like, what do you guys not read the news? They 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 kind People of sandbagged their own Superman like return thing though That's because funny. I I don't know if, I don't know if the movie's even really doing that well. Like I, 
I got this no. article uh, from Comic Book Movie saying uh, Black Adam's unlikely to turn a profit, leaving possible sequel plans in doubt. So, if this was supposed to be like a key oh, part yeah. of their plan, like they're kind of fucked. Everything was they writing on this. <laughs> <laughs> There was nobody. Yeah. There was there were two other people in the theater when I saw it. So mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't yeah, an evening like show. Three, but, yeah, uh, no, no, no. It wasn't like a Marvel movie where it was like packed. Yeah, I yeah. was there, and no. it was like a family, like in front of me, and they were like, yeah, just like watching the movie. And there's, I think, maybe one other person there. But it yeah. was like nobody there, which is weird. You know, Black Panther was packed. <laughs> yeah absolutely packed of course i just thought the setting the setting was really dumb of the film as well <laughs> whatever i think it's taken from the comic book like wherever it black panther's little kingdom stale is stale and repetitive and boring oh yeah absolutely and yeah it just looked like shit it was like all fucking gray and they're like oh yeah black adam we were saving us by the fucking destroying property <laughs> just blowing up yeah. it was like man it's steel all over again it's like they're fighting in the middle of the city blowing shit up yeah it's like why is everyone taking from man of steel it's like the damn uh, eternals movie how do you oh, feel yeah. about the uh the the insistence and uh <laughs> constant implication that black adam can do what superheroes can't because they can't kill people so black adam's better because he's not a superhero even though he's <laughs> doesn't do anything really villain like in the movie <laughs> he's so inconsistent <laughs> the only thing he does that's villain like is just like murdering people he's just like yeah I kill people I don't give a fuck it's like there's like, a whole, <laughs> like no one can stop him it's just like such a weird um, dynamic for the character and the, him and the hawk guy character mm -hmm. it's, I, I don't know it, none of them had any chemistry they were so rushed yeah Ugh. What do you think? So what about weird. the twist? It like builds up to this like crazy reveal where it turns out that like in the, in the opening exposition, it wasn't actually Black Adam's backstory. It was his son's backstory. Oh, but because of how they obscured <laughs> like the reveal, <laughs> like the the statue that he keeps looking yeah. at. Oh, it's not actually him. So it's the son. Yeah. And the, yeah, it was like this really like convoluted like twist to try and add like some sort of reveal for like oh we're at that point in the where it feels like there needs to be some sort of reveal. Let's uh, let's whip something out. Um, yeah, yeah. Like like everything else, it, it doesn't land or really do anything. <laughs> I yeah, I you total bullshit. I couldn't have told you that there was a twist in the movie. I was just so checked out. <laughs> I was yeah. I wasn't I wasn't yeah. really properly absorbing basically anything that they were trying to do narratively because it was just so it was so shit. It was so conflicting and it was just like. <laughs> It was the most boring narrative they possibly could have created. Man, that that was pretty bad. That whole part. Every character was annoying. Yeah, those sidekick characters, like yeah, Macro Deadpool and the other girl. <laughs> Macro yeah, so Deadpool. Deadpool and Ant Man combined. And they just ke keep making these like quippy jokes. Oh, and none, oh yeah, none, none not, of them not are a funny. One, not a single fucking joke. I can't even remember one. Yeah. There's a lot of attempts. The funniest parts were jokes. the serious moments. Like when the son is like killed in the flashback. It's like an arrow comes out of nowhere. Oh, I'm like, Jesus. That was funny. Oh, yeah. So yeah. bad. The assassin's going, yeah. <laughs> a lot of bad performances in the movie. Um, what's her name? Sarah Sahai? Or I'm going to have to double check her name. But yeah, she plays like the mom. Of like the the main kid or whatever in the movie, she's like a big big character. In yeah, it. and there's there's the comic relief like oh, her geez. brother character <laughs> where they're like trying to. <laughs> See, like trying I to completely forgot this, about like, him until you said. But yeah, he's a, like a big part of it. Yeah, and that was awful. Yeah, 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 and he's like a cartoon character. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's the comedic relief. Yeah, it is Sarah Shah Shahi. Um, but yeah, she's like a big part of the movie. She's like almost kind of a love interest for like Black Adam or like at least like Save My Son, something like that. And like a really weird Hen that Henry Winkler like uh, cameo <laughs> where Atom Smasher like FaceTimes Henry Winkler for some reason. <laughs> it's really fucking yeah. weird. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. Was that supposed to be funny? Um, I don't, I, I don't maybe. Really know. <laughs> so there was a scene where... So the kid is like, yeah, two things. 
They, they establish yeah. that uh, the kid has the kid a trap. The kid or the kid? The skateboarding kid. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's, like, a trap door in their apartment that leads to the, like, hallway. And it's like, well, why is that there? And then it's like, oh, so you can escape from the guy that's later. And that's the, that's the only reason that's there. But... Yeah. So the, the first scene happens where... Um, you know, he's interacting with the rock and they're awkwardly going down the stairs together as he's like floating through the center. And then I'm a bit confused about what was happening after that point. So the rock goes and does something and he's flying near the statue. And then there's a bunch of dudes with radios that are bad guys, I guess. And the kid takes a radio and... And because he can't act or enunciate properly, I didn't hear what he said. He was like, attention, all soldiers, some blah, 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 blah. And I, could, I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying. <laughs> and I, then there's this weird, like, feels like 20 years ago, like the, the beginning of Freddy Got Fingered, where there's like breakbeat music and he's, he's skateboarding and then he like <laughs> drops it into the fucking the, the hot pot or whatever. Why did he do that? Yeah, what yeah. was that all about? What did he say even? <laughs> it was, it was, that was something to do with like the, the, they kind of worship that statue right that turned out to be the rock son so i mm -hmm. guess he was seeing it as like now because the, the part of the story is about this like militia that's invading the uh the land yeah mm -hmm. um, so i guess it was supposed to be this like rising up kind of resistance type thing being led by this kid and the rock i guess um <laughs> Yeah, yeah really doc, really good. the setting is ca Stole doc. a radio to like distract them from the rock <laughs> looking at the statue or something. I don't know yeah. what he was trying to achieve. I just thought he was like excited trying to. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> Can yeah. someone please explain in the comments? Because I just, yeah. I'm so confused about why that took place. <laughs> and he apparently did it without telling the rock that he was going to do it. Uh huh. Because he was like, almost not going to be saved was the implication and he did the weird like Illuminati thing and tried to call out for him like I don't know yeah I don't know what he was doing that's right <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like <laughs> you, you try yeah, to understand certain out. parts of it like I I wasn't zoned out then I was like what the fuck is going on and then I just I, I just give up I get exhausted I'm like well who gives a shit? Well, it's, it's it's just hard to remember because it's been so long. I saw it so so long ago. Was it something to do with the crown? Because that was like the the MacGuffin of the movie was the crown. Yeah, turns you into a the demon crown had it. powers that gave them like <laughs> yeah all kinds of shit. The demon powers. Yeah, I think it was still in his room at that point, right? Yeah, it, it was in his room. Like yeah, they were on. trying to get it. That's why the bad guys like breaking into his room. The militia. Or whatever. Black Adam has to fight them yeah. off. But then the crown is taken by the devil guy, or the boy is taken. Right? Is it the. Oh I, I, I forgot what happened to the crown at that oh, point. Because they do I the think, fake out I think they the take the crown. Or whatever. Yeah. Or I think the good guys yeah. have the crown, and then the bad guys take, like, the kid and, and bring him and hold him for ransom. And then there's, like, a whole, like, dramatic scene where the kid, like, almost gets killed. And it's, like, you know, there's a shield. And that was fucking that atrocious. That scene so. was so frustrating to me. At that was like, point, I was checked out. Yeah, that's like, when I'm like having a hard time. It was trying so hard to be cool and slow mo, like so much of the other yeah. parts of the movie are. And so it's you know to show that The Rock, Black Adam, is so super fast or whatever. You get the slow mo bullet leaving the chamber. <laughs> it's like traveling like, towards the kid. The Rock <laughs> barely stops it with his hand, yeah. and then The Rock looks, and the guy's putting on the crown like. He apparently ran up there between the bullet exiting the <laughs> chamber and hitting, like, almost hitting the kid. Yeah. So he's like, almost, yeah, he almost has a crown speed. on. How fast is that guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, that, yeah. he doesn't even have exactly. powers yet. Yeah, he didn't have powers. What no, the exactly. Fuck? Like, a descendant. How did that happen? Makes no sense. They don't, they don't care. They don't care about anything. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> there's just like, there's, there's little tiny yeah. things. And that's the guy who becomes, like, the devil. Yeah, where I'm like, like okay, yeah. if, I was, if I was doing this, you know, there would be some cool uh -huh. details about, like, the accuracy of, like, slow-mo and time travel. Because there's, like, there's a part that's played in regular speed of uh, the guy has a machine gun and the rock is just kind of, like, moving, you know, his hand around 
slowly and in, in kind of just like a smooth pattern blocking every bullet. But it's like, that's yeah, not, yeah. you couldn't possibly do that unless the implication is he knows where he's going to fire the bullets before he fires them. Like, I thought the implication mm-hmm, is right. he's reacting to the bullets. It's really being fired. Lame. Like, there should be a jittery mm-hmm. fast motion yeah, of his like hand. Yeah, so fast he can react that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the implication. It's, but it's they just filmed a it dumb wrong. gag. They filmed it wrong. It's like, <laughs> yeah, right. It's like Looney Tunes logic. Like, it just doesn't fucking <laughs> yeah. matter. Yeah, like, uh, I was like the X Men movies, like, they do like the time distortion shit or like slow motion it works really yeah, well for those movies yeah, yeah that stuff's awesome right and this movie it's like so right forgettable you just don't even make the connection yeah i, just, I like when there's attention to detail and i sound like a crazy person for even yeah. considering there that there might be such a thing in this film <laughs> you know that's part of the fun of superheroes though is like the mechanics of their powers and like the drawbacks or like consequences of it yeah exactly yeah yeah, Make that it is interesting. The, one of the fun parts. I always say this whenever people get mad that I'm like criticizing the intricacies of something, like a time travel movie. I'm like, if if I'm a fan of this movie, I would be doing the same thing. Like, I I love dissecting and appreciating things like that. I love when there's attention to detail. Like, I do this with all my favorite movies, right? Like, if you're a fan of it, you mm-hmm. should you should also be doing this, should you not? Like, why would I? I don't know. It's so weird. Yeah. I don't understand people. Well, I'm glad you guys love the movie. Oh, fucking <laughs> amazing. I knew this would make for a great discussion. Yeah. And and I guess it did. Any any bad superhero movie. It, what, what what did it do? It changed the paradigm. What was the f- what changed did you say? the hierarchy no, like, of the yeah. DC. <laughs> I feel like paradigm like was in one of the other advertising things. Okay, too. Yeah. I'm going to look up where it that changed the hierarchy was. of DC. The Some hierarchy bullshit. of the DCEU Black Adam. Where is this quote from? Yeah, and I searched Paradigm Black Adam. Is it Black yeah. Adam Dwayne Johnson teases paradigm shift with intense oh, behind the scenes paradigm photo. shift. Oh, so it's like his advertising. Oh, on here Instagram. he is. Yeah, it's on. He posted on Instagram of him looking like. Here, I'll just send this to you. <laughs> Looks like Gladys. With that <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Instagram, and he's getting yeah. real <laughs> yeah, juicy, that's, fucking that's working out, deadlifting, <laughs> and he just posted, the hierarchy of power in the DC universe <laughs> is about to change. Hashtag new era. Hashtag anti-hero training. Hashtag Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> there's more too there's another one yeah we are redefining the superhero paradigm <laughs> yeah it's funny we have multiple examples <laughs> it's funny we have like more than one <laughs> the way that he hypes things up like i get it he's a pro wrestler it's it's all about hyping yeah, things yeah. that's the the, the yeah. career of being a hype man for yourself right but it's so funny because whenever Whenever things don't go exactly how he wants, whenever he doesn't have, like, the biggest movie of the year, he always does this weird, like, copium shit. Like, what was it? The <laughs> yeah, fucking... it yeah. Oh, yeah, where uh, he's just like, don't listen to critics, man, blah, 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 blah. What was the Baywatch? Was the one where he was, oh, it was his first, he, like, unsuccessful movie? He even did it movie? with that, um... Oh, he did it with that video game movie with the giant ape and the the giant Rampage. crocodile. The fuck? Rampage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we was like tweeting out this like, yeah, the biggest video game <laughs> movie ever made. Like all this giant kind of goofy video shit. Game movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I guess it, it is. It does read yeah. like a really insecure like hype man type. Thing. Yeah. I sure. every single day I exist on this planet, it gets proven more and more like that people who exhibit this like large bombastic overconfidence are some of the most just insecure people on the planet (laughs) you Mm. know again the crying laughing emoji like fucking elon musk was using that recently uh, (laughs) tweeting about how trent reznor is no longer on twitter he's like turns out trent reznor is just a cry baby ha ha i'm cry laughing i'm not upset that celebrities are leaving (laughs) my platform ha ha stephen king please love me (laughs) like fuck dude it's so crazy it's so embarrassing he's doing a score for uh, a luca guadino movie what a loser (laughs) <laughs> the richest man yeah. in the world yeah like Trent Reznor is in an incredibly successful place in his life if he doesn't want to use Twitter okay that's his decision <laughs> like could you the owner of the platform now is like calling people out who don't want to use the website like, that's crazy that's yeah as much as I like hate Twitter that's the one thing I'll give it 
is to like just bring out this side of like celebrities just so we can like truly see the facade like just crumbling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. For sure. I don't know. Um so you want to get into ratings for Black Two out of ten. Adam, I was about to say Black Panther. Easy to Damn, holy shit, is that low? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's that low. That's that's fine. Yeah. I didn't expect that low. Is that Dude, the same my... as Morbius? Because yeah, for me this is like not I as think bad I as gave Morbius, Morbius a three. That, would, that would be my only thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh Let's man see. so yeah i thought morbius was worse personally yeah um, morbius is worse this was kind of just exactly what i was expecting and exactly yeah. what i'd imagine a rock-led superhero movie to be um th- to me this is a like a two star two out of five star um uh yeah it's just nothing about it that's interesting yeah the kind of toned down Snyder thing with all that slow motion and the kind of dreariness and darkness, but then also it can't commit to that. It has to put in the like Marvel kind of side characters and the quips and the jokes and it's just yeah, and the post credit really achieves stuff. nothing. It seems yeah. clawing and embarrassing and just like this mm-hmm. cringy hype piece for the rock. So uh, I'm kind of glad it's not doing well because I really thought uh, it's difficult with it. It's difficult to predict, you know. Uh huh, sure. But that's exactly what it is. You know, it is like one of these things that's been in the works for years. Like in the pipeline, just make it for the rock, and yeah. So that's just exactly what it feels like. It's like, it's, why does this even exist? Yeah, I gotta give it a, a ten, a two out of five, no. ten out of ten, <laughs> <laughs> no, two out of five. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a two out of five. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not as. It's just not as bad as Morbius. I mean, to me, it's not. Even, I think it's worse than Morbius. They're not even yeah, the same part Morbius of much worse. Like, Morbius was just such a meme. Yeah. What's weird about this is <laughs> like, this okay, so mediocre. we have obviously the Rocket has huge star power. He's the, I believe, still the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Uh, many of his films are successful. Yeah. But it's interesting that they would still decide to make this because the films that he's in that are successful are generally not as dreary and darkly toned. Right, because people who want to see the rock, yeah. they want to see it for his charisma, and his charisma works well in movies where he's charismatic and where he, you know, like where he's in the jungle. Ha ha! Whoops! I hope this doesn't happen. Silly tone. Bop bop bop. You know, like that's what people have been <laughs> seeing with him in it consistently right. forever. And so they're releasing this thing. It's like fucking when Will Smith did After Earth. It's like this is the opposite of what people <laughs> wanted to see you do Mm -hmm. like why would you make yourself this dark depressing angry character like people people want to see fresh prints you know yeah people want to see red notice people want to see hitch (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly yeah so i don't know what they were thinking maybe it's more true to the character but yeah it just doesn't work like you could have made it work they could have had The didn't. Rock as Shazam. That's the thing, though. If he if he cared about being true to the character, like if he cared yeah. about being true to the yeah, character, if he actually I'm sure they could have yeah. actually done something <laughs> with the framing and not have to make this awkward like hype piece for him. Could you imagine if yeah. The Rock was Shazam? That movie would have made like ten times as much money. <laughs> true. Yeah, maybe they should have yeah. done that because it would have worked well for it. Like he, the he could have played the character and the juxtaposition between you know his stature and the child would have been exaggerated too and you know added yeah with him playing a kid yeah 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 there could have been some some funny humor there that would have worked um, i'm pretty sure, sure. there's actually like i'm pretty sure he like v- he had the choice between playing those two characters really and he was like <laughs> asking his fans and they what? wanted him to play black adam <laughs> so he, he chose that because i guess this is good <laughs> Uh, quote unquote cooler and edgier and everyone wants to oh. be the like cool villain I suppose um, <laughs> that changes the hierarchy and shifts the paradigm yeah <laughs> yeah you gotta just shift the paradigm but that's the funny thing too it's like anyone <laughs> who actually likes these kind of stories in these superhero uh-huh. movies will know that like evil Superman basically it's just uh-huh. not, it's like that's not like a new or fresh idea like come on <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's been yeah. that's been played around with for so yeah. long now you you're right, Adam. Hmm? Yeah, no, I hit my elbow and like, yeah. Uh, okay. So. Oh, I thought I you like, were just happened? reacting to the rock. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah, no, you were reacting to the movie. <laughs> Out my eyes. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, not not a good movie. <laughs> that's, that's my quote on the DVD cover. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> on the on, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on the VHS cover. <laughs> I was yeah, I was really hoping that you know they put him 
in the movie at a certain point they just like put him in cryos sleep <laughs> i was like oh cool is it gonna like end yeah here? if the credits just play <laughs> that was the suicide squad lady that it was that lady, yeah, the yeah. Blonde lady so they could yeah shove that into the universe too and put like yeah uh, I was just Jennifer thinking about Holland. all those channels yeah. that like take screenshots from these movies with the big red circles and a little look who's in the background. <laughs> for the, the thumbnail? The cry of sleep scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just. Oh, I love God. those. Yeah. There's such memes, those kinds of thumbnails. I, I said them as a. Uh, like, like, you know, to my friends all the time. His message is like, does he know? But yeah, Black Adam explained sort of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I guess that's Black yeah, Adam. Yeah, awful. Uh, I just... Be- <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, uh-huh. I found the Angry Joe tweet <laughs> of him. Oh, really? This was after was I released sad. my review, and I the, it was a short Insane. review, and I was mentioning the that people were rating the film before it was like even out <laughs> and all these and so his his claim is that my two out of ten is to compensate the uh high ratings from fanboys but i never said that i just i gave it a two out of ten because it was a two out of ten movie <laughs> i don't know what it was about that movie i think i even got an angry joe comment around that era when yeah. i was talking about suicide squad because it's man <laughs> damn <laughs> Some about these superhero movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's weird kinda, to uh, me because, like, what was the? It, yeah, recently it was like what the hell? The new Hellraiser movie is a movie that like a lot of people don't like, and I loved. And I just what did I do? I like made a video about it, and I, I didn't be like, oh, this person that like it's so weird and insecure to like. No matter what anybody mm-hmm. else thinks about the movie, that's not gonna like change what it means to me. So I don't know why other people. Like people like this feel like they need everybody else to validate their opinions like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it comes across as sort of insecurity. For yeah, sure. like why you just you can enjoy it, and I can not enjoy it, and we can have our own experiences with art, you know? It's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> that's fine. Whatever. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's crazy. Boogie woogie time. Boogie Woogie Woogie. There is a movie oh, yeah. called Boogie Woogie with Heather Graham. Oh, you that's not talk what about we're it? talking about. We're, no, no, no. We're talking about Boogie Nights. I don't oh, even know not? if you guys have seen that. I haven't. I haven't seen Boogie Woogie. Have you seen yeah. Boogie Woogie? <laughs> no, I haven't seen Boogie Woogie. I'm sure it's fine. But we're talking about Boogie Nights from 1997, the year I was born. Um, I gotta look up the exact date, like the movie came out. I want to see if it's like around my my birthday. Um. I have been saying that a lot this episode. Mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> I gotta look up. <laughs> gotta look up something. Sure. Um, so this movie is by Paul Thomas Anderson. It's about a bunch of porn stars. Mark Wahlberg's a porn star named spoiler Eddie discussion. Adams or Dirk Diggler. Yeah, spoiler discussion. His name is Dirk Diggler. And <laughs> it's it's about his like, it's like a rise and fall story done in a sort of satirical slant where you know it's obviously about a bunch of people in the porn industry but it is like this rags to riches um and fall again story where you see like oh you get the appeal of like by this character you know wanted to be a porn star and he goes into making porno films and he he wins all kinds of awards and success and then you know at some point the movie kind of takes like a really interesting um, tonal shift or it gets much darker yeah and um it also becomes more of a like a character ensemble and less focused on mark Wahlberg particularly because there's many other interesting characters and yeah it focuses more on them as the movie goes along which is great i mean there's a lot of great performances in this movie of uh, philip seymour hoffman Every movie he's in, he's great. Uh, Louise Guzman's really good. William H. Macy, Heather Graham, John C. Riley, Don Cheadle, Burt Reynolds, you know, J- Julianne Moore. Yeah, it's a great cast. Yeah. Of uh, actors they have. Do you want to add something? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Chocker. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I loved this. Um, 
Yeah. Even in, actually, no, I'll get into that in a second, but uh, yeah, it's just the, because the, we previously, I think you recommended Punch Drunk Love. Um, yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just reminded me of that, the sensitivity and the kind of empathy that his writing brings forward with some of these characters, because it would be easy, especially with that satirical mm. slant, to take the humanity out of some of them. But um, despite that comedy and how funny it can be, like there's real real drama in there and a lot of like pain and misery and kind of watching this fucked up family, basically, uh, form uh, throughout the movie. <laughs> and like, that's basically where it concludes. It's like, <laughs> yeah. like, like gathered around a pool and... Yeah. You've seen like this huge, significant part of their lives. Um, (laughs) At first, I I thought you meant the scene at the beginning, toward the beginning with Mark Wahlberg's family, where you see him like, is Bob yelling at him? Well, yeah, that's kind of the end. That's like swelling, and that's kind of the point because it's like, yeah, well, you see where it came from. Background, and they're all they all have this kind of hurt, and they're all like longing and searching Uh for something that they happen to find with this uh, (laughs) this group of misfits. Heather Graham's character. Yeah, she's like harassed in class, and they all find solace in like yeah, this weird group of people who make porno movies of, under um, the the Burt Reynolds character. Did you um, notice Jack that yeah, um, being... the the guy that was harassing her in class was the same guy in the limo that she like kicked? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That was one of the the few little tiny details. Not at first. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I. <laughs> That's a cool one. That tie back personally. Um, mm Hmm. Yeah, but I liked what it brought but, out the characters yeah. in the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I thought it was great. Um, it's definitely up there for for PTA. Uh, mm-hmm. Although he's got a lot of great films, <laughs> it's a really high bar. That's uh, true. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it's a it's a favorite of mine personally. It's yeah. like maybe top two. I think the only one I haven't seen now the, is his first one. Was it Heart Eight? Is that what it's called? Oh yeah, Hard Eight. Yeah. I haven't seen that either. Okay. Yeah, um, me there will be blood. That's my other favorite. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite. Um, this yeah. is a this is a film that is very ambitiously big. Um, yeah, it's, it's not it's even. Yeah. Epic. It's not even like conceptually like that big of a story, but just how they present it. And there's such a huge cast, entirely star studded. Um, a lot of actors in this film where I'm like, holy shit, you're skinny. Like <laughs> John C. Riley, his yeah. head looks like too big. And I'm like, I can't tell if that's just because <laughs> I'm I'm used to seeing him bigger, <laughs> the rest of his body bigger, and his head just stayed yeah. the same. I'm like, your, your head just seems too big for your body. Like all of these actors <laughs> are just yeah. so skinny. It's extremely and it's, committed to the period like, piece uh, nature of the beginning uh-huh, of the 70s. Right, right, the look. right. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, they're all they're, they all look great. Yeah, and it's a career highlight, I think, for all of them. Yeah, they for were Marky all Mark, seriously great in the movie. For yeah, uh, Doc Ock, what's his name? Alfred Molina, yeah. Alfred Molina. Yeah, I was really yeah. surprised when he showed up, and that was what a fantastic scene. This little scene that's like later on. Yeah, yeah, that's great. It's like a little, um, you know, and then <laughs> like mm-hmm. a little aside. It was yeah. so great. I yeah. love that. I love that part. Good casting uh, all around, and it it doesn't feel bloated. Also. Somehow, no, not Even at all. It's so Despite long, its runtime, yeah. it is a fairly long film, and, the and it juggles it all extremely well. well. Well, yeah, it has such an energy to it. Like even it's just the camera work and the way everything's shot. Yeah, it really, like it keeps going. There's a great pace to it. It's really fast moving, and yeah, you know, like I said, the the tonal shifts. Like it gets very serious, and it's like it works so well. Like in some movies, it might not work, but yeah, once it gets into like the the donut shop scene. And like the shit mm-hmm. like that, the, yeah, the rape scene in the car, the, mm-hmm. uh, the, the drug abuse and like, yeah, his fall from grace, him getting abused in the car and yeah, all kinds of shit like that. It's, it, it gets really dark. <laughs> and that's great because you don't think it's going to go there. Um, where, what happens with William H. Macy and his little subplot with his wife, mm-hmm. that character. Yeah, I, I love all that stuff. And yeah, it all just, it, it comes to a head and. It's like kind of a precursor to something like Magnolia. I don't know if you guys have seen that, where it's like a ton yeah, of different yeah. characters all like I need to see all it their again. plot lines so converge. When I watched it, yeah, yeah I need to. Re- it was like that. It too, I think but... this movie is definitely better. I do think this is better, and I think it handles like all those different characters coming together 
um, and like all their different su- like subplots converging and whatever, just because there is that central character of Mark Wahlberg like tying the whole movie together and his journey of like becoming a star in like you know the porno <laughs> film sphere, which is like yeah. just so fascinating in the way the movie presents it. Um, and yes, yeah, like the authenticity in it. This idea so. of um. Despite its length and despite how much you see and how much kind of growth you see the characters go through, um, I was reading through like some of the trivia and I, I saw it pointed out that like basically all of the characters are exactly the same at the end as they are at the beginning. But that takes nothing away from the movie at all. It really enforces it. Um, and you, you get such a good impression of like what each one of these characters is about, and it still yeah, manages to sure. shove in yeah. so much, so much, so many like themes and ideas, and explore all these concepts. Be it seventies drug and disco scene, or porno and the technology destroying that industry, and just this weird like pocket mm-hmm. of time where this one type of product was booming in this certain way. So you you could have these kind of porno stars on this level. Um, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and this idea of like um <laughs> i love uh burt reynolds character he's like his motivation is trying to make like a a, a real <laughs> like art yeah. film basically out of out of porn and we've we've been asked that a bunch <laughs> of times like on in the questions thread about like porn and is it possible for it to cross that line into being like a true art film or whatever and every porn it, like, i look at that is art. and explores it <laughs> true. They believe it's literally be. animated. Yeah. So yeah, it's all right. Man. Yeah. 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 Well, they live in like this environment where it is kind of like the Oscars, where they're giving each other awards and going to ceremonies, and there's like yeah. this ego yeah. attached to it that yeah. makes them want to like you know. That's like kind of what happens. Like you say, they don't change. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of true. But it is more of like they do go on a journey throughout the film where for sure they, they, there's a point where they they them. feel they feel they're almost better than being in like pornos. So they kind of try to go outside themselves a bit, like every character. But then they kind of fail and they all kind of retreat back into the the solace of like you know that industry and being around those same people. And that's like the end of the movie. It's kind of like a bittersweet ending. Mm-hmm. But there is like a dark kind of like interpretation of it that I think is kind of cool and, and really interesting. Um, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. What, the, the soundtrack for this movie is fucking great. Mm. Really awesome. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that that keeps up the energy as well. The disco. I loved the soundtrack to this movie. Yeah. My only real criticism of this movie is that I felt like oh the first <laughs> half of the movie was kind of like the soundtrack was doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of the uh, keeping the pacing together. I found, I found that it got a lot more interesting in the second half, um, like independent of the soundtrack. And, you know, it, the soundtrack wasn't used as heavily in the second half. Um, yeah, the first half of the movie so is still that great. Contrast there. But, oh yeah, the contrast made it like definitely worth it. That's but. what I that's what I dug about it. Because you're, you're kind yeah. of there with him, with that energy, with his rise, and then it kind of stops being as preppy and hopeful once the the, the it kind of yeah. unravels and I, I, the truth behind what's going on kind of comes clear again yeah, i loved this movie exactly. but i i would say that it felt in terms of like a narrative it felt like kind of borderline meandering for the first half of the movie and it's a long movie so the first half is a long time um and i was enjoying it because i was enjoying the songs <laughs> you know and i was like haha just kind of like nodding along and like always you know, upbeat, just like, oh yeah, I like where this is going with the music. But I was, you know, kind of itching. I'm like, I, I'm hoping this goes somewhere a bit more interesting where it's not like as reliant on the the heavy soundtrack. And it did. Yeah. It did. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think exactly <laughs> yeah. thoughts with that payoff yeah. is just so strong. It, it, yeah, yeah. It makes it work as a whole to me. Yeah. The whole movie. And, and it's helped that the music complements the visuals mm. too. The movie is really awesome cinematography and i think the opening for the film is iconic how it's that long opener shot with the sign and yeah that's when it establishes that this is going to be such a fast-paced fun movie with a lot of style and it basically maintains that yeah with a lot of characters like going between them and yeah the movie maintains that pace throughout basically the entire thing it never dragged for me at all and that's really saying something for a movie so long yeah it's such a great film like it's so entertaining and well made. Yeah, great music too. Yeah, like we were saying. 
Um, and yeah, it's a fun period to explore. Like, oh, you can use that music because it's fitting for the period. <laughs> but Paul Thomas Anderson's really good at that, the period pieces. Like, I love Licorice Pizza, too. And whenever he makes a movie like this and just explores, like, a period yeah. of time. There is a very um, heavy, like, sense of admiration and nostalgia for the time periods in his film. Yeah, films. he's good at it. Uh-huh. And it ties into the characters and how... You know, it informs them and how they act. Yeah, it's interesting. He was born in 1970. So it's kind of like, you know, me being born in the 90s and being nostalgic for the 90s, right? Um, Yeah. You're still a kid, but you still like kind of have this, you know, rose colored glasses sort of thing for that time period. Yeah, romanticized kind of. Yeah. Maybe because you were a kid, maybe because, you know, life didn't really hit you yet. (laughs) And you're just kind of. No responsibility. That's part of what's so good about it, though, is that it doesn't like fully romanticize mm-hmm. the, the satire angle. Like the, these characters, there are like pain, and there's a lot of like exploitation and like filth that comes about as a result yeah. of this. It almost like I'm wondering. Maybe I'm like trying to think too hard into like the meaning of him creating this film because at times, it, at times in the first half of the film, it really feels like, oh wow, this is kind of like almost like sexually liberating in a way because of how casually these characters are treating sex. And, you know, it's it's like kind of like an honest reflection of the industry where to these people, it's just like, oh yeah, sex, whatever. It's like, it's not like a big deal in their lives. And then second half of the movie kind of comes in. It's like, it's almost feeling like, like almost like a weird kind of like PSA of like, don't do porn, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. It's almost like a moral lesson there. And I was like, maybe, maybe it's neither. Maybe it's, he's just telling a story and it's, there is no like prescription, right? But, it definitely does deal with the idea of sort of like commodifying sex and kind of turning it into a product. And how mm-hmm. kind of, there are some kind of creepy scenes where they are like really like just plainly describing what, perhaps should be kind of like an intimate or personal moment but there's like a crew of people there and it's just like a a weird kind of environment and especially when it gets more into like the julianne moore like character kind of being this like motherly figure to a bunch of them because they clearly lacked that in their lives in a certain way some of the characters under mm-hmm. them like the rollerblade girl and there is something disturbing about it um and how it uses sex like that including with the the uh William H. Macy um, and his wife and where that goes like it it shows like a, a whole gambit of how it can affect someone and it, you know it destroys some some people's lives more than others oh yeah I love that shit with him <laughs> if, if I were ever a casting director or agent in the late 90s and I was proposed with the task of casting a cuck I would also pick William H. Macy he plays yeah, it he like, plays it very well. Do you think he gets off on being cast as like a cuck? <laughs> yeah. He loves he's, it. He, yeah. Great casting. Yeah. Yeah, oh, amazing casting. Really well done. Philip Seymour Hoffman, fucking incredible character acting. Uh yeah, I loved him in the yeah, movie. It pretty much goes yeah. without saying. I, everyone, like yeah. A, yeah. I'm gleeful whenever he shows up in anything. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, we got to talk about Mark Wahlberg more because yes, please. For me, that was that, that was the big mm-hmm. like sticking point for me. Um, like reading about like he he leads this movie because I don't know about you guys, but I, I just I'm not a fan of Same. Mark Wahlberg. Um, not really overall. What? Um, I, I really no. I almost see him as like a a rock type actor where i can't not see mark Wahlberg with like less kind charisma. of like the same in like every yeah less charisma let alone like the stuff from his private life and just what he seems to be like as a person and on top of that like the you read any of the weird stuff about him like talking about this movie in retrospect and no, stuff um please I'll, me- I'll mention that in a second but please, yeah, sure. even despite <laughs> all that and how i feel about him it, it works in the movie he sells the movie yeah he's good in it maybe it's the one One thing that like not to spoil my score that would make it perfect for me is perhaps if he was replaced with uh, DiCaprio or uh, Joaquin Phoenix who I think were the front runners for it I feel like that for me maybe would have edged it because I just feel like they they could sell certain scenes just that tad bit extra for me Um, especially now in retrospect with just what I see when I see Mark Wahlberg but yeah for the most part he actually really does does a good job. He's well cast. I'll give him yes. that. Yes. 
I'll give the project that he f- he fits the role well, and he's got that. Kind yeah, of, he is kind I of playing he like a dumbass. Exactly. <laughs> <characters>. <laughs> yeah, ignorant. <laughs> Ignorance. Is it plus. works because his character is supposed to be kind of pathetic. Yeah, that's that's like why yeah, it works. Insecure. So and the, yeah, there's there's scenes throughout this film where the way that he delivers lines, it re- honestly reminds me of some parts of the happening, but it's not. <laughs> In the happening, it's shit. But in this movie, it works because his character is so pathetic, and it, it, you know, this film is kind of satirical and kind of like tongue in cheek, and you know, there there can be elements to it that where where you're kind of laughing at <laughs> the character, um, and it's you know, it feels intentional in a way, even even if it, even if it might be not necessarily intentional from Mark Wahlberg, we don't know, but it feels intentional in the greater context of the film. At the very least. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, do you think he just he was into the role because he was cast as this guy with a like freakishly huge dick? Like, is that <laughs> how simple it is? Like <laughs> Yeah. Because I thought he was more like one of those like rock type things where he'd, he'd pick his roles a bit more carefully based on how it makes him look. But uh Maybe he just wanted to work with the director. I mean, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't the name he was now, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, I mean. Exactly, yeah. Which was yeah, what was so. interesting about um, this this article I found um, on IndieWire. Um, yeah. Let me find the, the bit. Yeah, so Mark Wahlberg mm-hmm. dropped a bombshell last month during an appearance at the UIC Pavilion in Chicago speaking with Cardinal Blase Kupich. Wahlberg, Wahlberg mentioned that he somewhat regretted starring in PTA's Boogie Nights, saying his role as Dirk Dickler was at the top of his list of poor career choices. What the Wahl- fuck Wahlberg's is thoughts problem? went viral in no time, <laughs> but the actor is here to clear the air somewhat. Speaking to people on the Daddy's Home 2 red carpet, okay. <laughs> Wahlberg clarified his comments and explained why he said what he did. I was sitting in front of a couple of thousand kids talking about and trying to encourage them to come back to their faith. And I was just saying that I just hope he has a sense of humor because I maybe made some decisions that may not be okay with him. Wahlberg said, him, I guess, meaning God. In Wahlberg's original comment, the actor said, I just always hope that God is a movie fan and always forgiving because I've made some poor choices in my past. Boogie Nights is up there at the top of this list. The actor says having a family has changed his perspective on the type of movie and roles he accepts. Wahlberg doesn't necessarily regret starring in Boogie Nights, which is often cited as his dramatic breakthrough, but he probably would never take a role like Dirk Diggler, now that he's a father. I don't want to compromise my artistic integrity or choices based on my faith or family, but I also have other things to consider. Being a little bit older and a little wiser, the idea of having to explain that that movie and the reason behind it to my kids is another issue, Wahlberg told people. Uh, Crazy. But you probably wouldn't have much of an acting career. Is that considered... <laughs> Like this was like a pretty yeah, yeah. significant a, breakout role for him. I don't know if sure. he realizes that. It's an awesome movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, it's a great fucking movie. I mean, what's he talking about? Yeah, Love this fucking movie. But like, what, 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 it's it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole point about like not being able to explain it to your kids is like, what, what do you not understand? Like what the movie is about, <laughs> like what it's saying. Like, what do you mean? You're like an actor, right? No, Isn't he's just like your job? he just sees like <laughs> porno, and then you see my dick at the end. <laughs> it's like, that's all he like sees in the yeah, movie. I guess like Transformers is easy to explain to a child, but something oh, right. complex yeah. and full of like thematic depth. Even like. though this movie's yeah, like much better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah I just like found that he very the point. It's a great fucking movie. Like it was incredibly well received. I don't think he's gonna have a problem explaining it. Yeah, I love this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And the and like the difference was I was reading about like Burt Reynolds. Like he was clashing with. PTA throughout the whole process. Mm, yeah, that's but like, right. But it, I don't know, it doesn't take anything away from the movie. It kind of weirdly works for that character and it, it doesn't ruin his performance. You would never really know that, like watching it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd also like to point out, because you were mentioning, you know, did he just get cast for being a guy with a freakishly large penis? The The penis was a prosthetic. Just wanted to point that yeah, out. Yeah, of course. Oh, no, no, I meant um, like yeah. when he's reading the script, like, oh, this okay. is this is good. It's like fluffing me up. It's like, excuse the pun. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, all the women want to fuck him. Yeah. He's like got a woman in his bed. And then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he bangs roller girl oh, later. You were in that movie yeah. where you played the guy with the huge dick, right? That's funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
the movie doesn't shy away from any of that stuff, which is another great thing about it. It's like got a ton of it's like pretty explicit, which is great. You know, it's, it's about porno. You don't yeah. want to shine away. But, you know, it's not like showgirls. It's not like that bad. It's explicit and like weirdly mature despite the comedic tone. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not, not like, like showgirls uh, where yeah. that feels exploitive. Yeah, exactly. This is like perfect balance. Yeah, showgirls that. felt a bit exploitative. And then films like, I don't know, like American Pie, where it's just like, okay, well, well, like the sex is just treated like so childishly. Whereas this is still comedic and still mature, which is a tough thing to balance you know yeah it plays it for laughs but it's not childish about it yeah at the same time Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, i I don't know about you guys but i kept thinking about almost famous and this was almost like Mm -hmm. what i wanted from that movie where i feel like a lot of the depth was kind of like similar soundtrack skipped over almost in that movie and it wasn't yeah (laughs) yeah and it's the same setting in the the 70s and everything um yeah, I don't know what it was particularly about that, but I just found a lot more depth and a lot more kind of satisfaction uh, Yeah, this kind of exploring. Because it, it is exploring similar themes with the, like, sure. the fame sure. aspect and the sex and especially like mm-hmm. the uh, the abuse of certain people. and Yeah. I'm just saying I, I love both Almost Famous and uh, Boogie Nights. I do think Boogie Nights is better just because it's like it's probably one of my favorite movies, like probably top 10. Just because, yeah, it's it's got so much energy to it. It's so entertaining. And yeah, I love, like, the edge of it. Like, uh, I love that period and, like, how it explores it. Yeah. Um, what else is there to say about it, um, aside from what we've said? Um, Paul Thomas Anderson was, like, 26 when he made this. Yeah. That's crazy. Crazy. I gotta make a movie like this soon. <laughs> <laughs> gotta catch up. Yeah. It's turning it's 25. It's so ambitious. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's huge, cool. like, yeah, the amount of... It's a cool movie. ...characters in the script and then characters in each scene while they're still doing, like, a bunch of one and just working with so much, so much yeah. talent. And just... Balancing so the much, tones. Yeah, there's yeah. so much, like, faith behind the movie. It was somehow made for $15 million. Which yeah, um, surprise like you look that at. I, mean, I don't know helps. what's what's a good example. Let's look up some David O. Russell budgets. Let's see, because <laughs> he really yeah, it really feels like this is the movie that David O. Russell tries to make a lot of the times. You, you know, true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's see. Except his movies aren't as good. So if we look up the budget of like Amsterdam or American Hustle, like how much did those cost? 80 million mm-hmm. for Amsterdam. Right. 40 million for American yeah. Hustle. American Hustle prop like I don't know with inflation might not be that far off from you know, I don't know. But still like a 15 million dollar budget for this. It's it, crazy. it is wacky as a second movie. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, following Hard 8 which I mean like people like it seems but I don't know if it's like quite the success that a uh, you know a Magnolia or a uh, Punch Drunk Love, or especially um, uh, There Will Be Blood, like kind mm. of covered, you know? Yeah. It's, the way he speaks about Heart Aid, I don't think he's in love with it, but I'm sure it's a fine movie. Yeah. This is definitely better. This is definitely when he, like, right, he, mm-hmm. he definitely honed in his skill here. Yeah. This is a great, like, second movie. The fact that it's his second movie and he made it so young. Oh yeah. That's God. crazy. Yeah. It's really impressive. Unsurprisingly, there's. There's two <laughs> motion picture soundtracks for this movie. <laughs> Boogie Nights music from the motion original motion picture, and then Boogie oh, Nights two more music from the original motion picture. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So just more. It's not even like the score. Is like literally just two albums worth just of music, tracks. and I'm sure they didn't include every track. Yeah. Felt like there were like six albums worth of music in the first half of the movie. <laughs> it was just song after song. Yeah, after song. they do that sometimes. They don't include stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> yeah, it was like a it was um, like a lengthy music video in a way. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He directs a lot of music uh, videos, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, yeah he yeah. does. He does a lot of stuff yeah. for like Radiohead and and them, and they do like his scores. Johnny Greenwood, right? Oh, that's yeah. who it is. Johnny Greenwood. Yeah. Um, and he did music videos, I think, for is her name Alana Hein or Heim? Alana. Mm. 
the girl who's in Licorice Pizza, the main girl, like because oh. she's like a singer. Oh, so okay. yeah, he did music videos for her too, and she's obviously in Licorice Pizza. She's good in it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, not sure what else to say about La Boogie Nights. People wanted us to talk about it. They wanted me to recommend it because you hadn't seen this film, and now I have. And it seems like you enjoyed it. Like you really enjoyed it, which is good. I'm glad it'll get high ratings. <laughs> I'm glad it's not like a oh, it's like not so good. Didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I'm you glad we all enjoyed the nah. movie. Yeah, this yeah. is a Hall of Famer. I I love this movie. It's top ten, I think. Like I said, top twenty around there. It weirdly made me want to um, rewatch uh, Inherent Vice, um, being another film from him set in the seventies with a similar runtime. But to be honest, I don't think I even like managed to finish it the first time um like when it came out there was something about it that really bugged me um mm-hmm. i struggled to get through that one again yeah i've tried doing it again but yeah at some really? point it's just kind of not off something yeah. about that uh, yeah like, um, yeah, yeah. This it's made me very curious though right he kind of perfected it already with this <laughs> yeah. yeah like the big lebowski what we just talked about those movies do it a bit better i see what he was going for i don't hate the movie it's just, you know, it's not like fucking disaster movie or whatever, like a Jason Freeberg no, no. or Seltzer movie. It's, yeah, I'm like, it did really work for me. Like a swing and a miss. It's funny you mentioned The Big Lebowski because that, there's that scene that is about the porn industry. Um, and they're, yeah. they're talking about some Almost of the connected. stuff that is covered in the movie. Yeah, with the like, the move to home video and how they like murdered uh, the original kind of porn scene. We had to like go to a theater and watch it. It's yeah. Interesting little crossover. Mm-hmm. I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10. It could go up to a 10 at some point in the future. Love the movie. Uh, very narratively satisfying. I loved where it went. Uh, second half, I find to be a lot better than the first half. Um, yeah. Great movie. Very yeah. satisfying. I'm, I'm pretty much there with you. The same rating. Four and a half star. 9 out of 10. Yeah, I think I would probably bump it up if just not for that little mark, marky mark problem I personally have. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, yeah, it's just very sophisticated writing and extremely ambitious. And the fact it doesn't kind of inherit vice itself is pretty stunning to watch. Um, yeah, I love the journey, how unpredictable it was, the some of the like tension um, towards the end, yeah, especially like like very... that donut scene, like the Alfred Molina scene, like that was. I was not expecting that from this movie, so it's like an extra kind of yeah, surprise. Super well communicated. <laughs> you're not expecting yeah. it at all. That's what makes it so no, great. No, and it's it like, really holy works. Shit. So, yeah, yeah the tension is great. I love the drama too. Like some really heartbreaking scenes, like Julianne Moore with the with the lawyers and stuff. And there's just a lot of like pain with these characters that they they do communicate well. And the satire angle too. It's just, it's just everything I basically love from in filmmaking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love this film as well. I can't say I'd say there's anything bad about it. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 or 5 out of 5. The perfect score. Beep, 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 yeah, I love this beep, movie. Beep, beep. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Fireworks oh. shooting off. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. And that's that. That is La Boogie Nights. Woo. Starring Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. So before we get into questions, I'm just going to do something fun here. I'm posting a link in the in the chat of a website where you can find out what the number one movie on your birthday, like literal birthday, oh, cool. is. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, just like a book of the this. The day you were born. Um, so I already know mine. Uh, it's like a Steven Seagal movie. Let's see. Uh, That's mine. Uh, where do I find it? Find number one movie. Where is it? Does this fucking website not work anymore? It works it's for me. It's working for me. Yeah. Mine is Speed 2. <laughs> speed 2, Who's Cruise speed Control. Two? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome summer movie, Speed 2, Cruise Control. God, mine's Ooh. Naked Gun 33 and a third, The Final Insult. What? It's pretty oh, good. yeah, that was the mo- a movie. Sorry. <laughs> I, I almost... <laughs> could, yeah, when I, when you it. said it, I almost <laughs> thought you were talking about Naked Lunch for some reason. I was like, Naked Lunch 33 and a third? <laughs> no, not as number one. But yeah, then I remember the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Naked Lunch. Oh yeah, Out for Justice. Wow. 
Steven Seagal out for justice. Oh, wow. Wow. That's funny. What, what, three interesting movies. Which I haven't seen. So have we all... So Alex, you saw yours, and then Ralph, you Trying saw... Sales I'm assuming you've seen Speed yeah, 2. I, I've, yeah, I've seen wow, Speed 2. and yeah. the only one who hasn't seen the number one movie on my birthday. No, no, I, I've only seen the original Naked Gun. I haven't seen 33 and a third, the final oh, one. So oh, you I haven't? Seen that one. No. Oh, oh, oh. So maybe, maybe I've got to check that one out, you know? Yeah. Good wreck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh... I guess uh, question time. Okay, let's do some questions from the Sardonicast community. Head over to the suggestion thread on the subreddit if you want to ask us anything. Um, we might as well start with this one from Read Asleep 8461, seeing as we did just talk about Boogie Nights and it's one of the themes of the movie, or questions asked in the movie. Hey there, Sards. In Boogie Nights, Jack, the director, at one point states that he wants to make porn that also doubles as a compelling movie that people want to watch. Do you think this is possible? Why or why not? Much love and thanks. Um, I feel like we have talked about this like a long time ago, but it's an apt question of what we're talking about. I mean, um, I like short bus. So to me, yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Is that porn though? It, yeah, that's the thing. What do you mean? Like, does it even count as like Where's the line then? You wouldn't call it a porno, would you? Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Exactly. The question is about the line. Well when what what makes something crossed? porn? Like it's unsimulated yeah, sex be? between people on camera, right? And they're doing that. So like if you cut out everything but the money shot scenes, then it would be a porn, right? There's there's at least porn within the movie. Like most of the movie isn't porn, I guess, but I guess the difference is the porn is for the purpose of like sexual arousal. Whereas like a movie that might be something it's trying to attempt within the movie, but it's also like perhaps trying to do a narrative or establish. I mean, I don't know if like, yeah, whether intentional or inadvertently, you're going to sexually arouse some people by having sexually explicit imagery in a film. Right. Like there's, there, there's Mm -hmm. tons of, uh, things included in non pornographic movies that are explicitly intended to, induced sexual arousal like michael bay the fucking megan fox washing her car shit i'm like mm-hmm. that does there's no purpose of that other yeah, than sure for people to get a boner <laughs> right like that's the whole point it's pornographic it, yeah 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 so yeah. i don't know like it's a but the context of it being in like a transform it is like weird <laughs> i think that for the character <laughs> yeah. in boogie nights like Sure, that sounds like an interesting, ambitious thing to do, but what we see him do in the film is not really that. Like, he's just kind of full of himself and doesn't know what he's doing. He's just making a porn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's something about it. Because it's a... God, what was that movie? Um, That has the real, like, blowjob in it that's, like, really... Brown Bunny? Yeah, Yeah, Brown Bunny. That's the one. Whereas it feels like if it is like baked into the movie, like real sex is baked into the movie. It almost like overpowers anything else it's trying to go for. And it just becomes, oh, that movie that had th- th- that blowjob in it. <laughs> that blowjob in it. Yeah. yeah. Fucking, yeah, Lars von Trier has done it. Or I guess sometimes he'll use like porn stunt doubles for parts in movies. He did that in Antichrist. And I think, I believe they used doubles in The Idiots, but there was like an orgy scene in that where it was like unsimulated sex. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting question, but like, yeah, it just seems like a, a guttural type. People just reject that, that certain line. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. There's tons of like, It depends. Yeah, I don't. It depends on how you define it, right? Because there's some, Mm. uh, a lot of, uh, you know, people that make, let's say, animated porn. There's a lot of people that do like story based, like choose your own adventure games. And some of these people make like really they do kind of like focus a lot on story they'll they'll be like oh there's porn in the game and you can get to it through certain options but like this character is gonna die of cancer and like you're gonna feel sad about it right. sort of so it's like i don't do like is that porn yes is it a narrative yes right so like where 
I don't know. It just depends on how we define it, I guess. Yeah. I guess it comes back to that core problem of like having to define art, which is hard to kind of define. But then when it comes to something like this, it just seems like there is like a firm line in the sand where certain people won't touch it. Certain producers will not fund your works. Like if, if you're trying to include some of these things and you will have a harder time, including like real sex and whatnot, and people will look down at it a certain way or not see it the same as, uh, something that treats sex differently. Uh, it's an interesting question, but uh, it's not like I'm lying awake at night like, man, that, that there's a space here for a, the, the porno, the perfect porno that has the, the ultimate balance of real sex and, and a story to get involved in, like what the character in the movie is talking about. <laughs> so that, that doesn't keep you up at night? <laughs> yeah, just, just too many yeah, people have like these weird reservations around like nudity and sexuality that, you know, that's sure. the thing, though, because uh, to really. be honest, it's, it's such a like core human thing that it almost seems weird that we are, we do feel so strongly about that. Yeah, it's entirely in just cinema. taboo social shit. You know, it might as well not yeah. be like depending it, it differs throughout cultures, too. You know, there's some cultures where it's like ex extreme taboo. No, no. And there's some cultures where it's like, OK, this is just kind of matter of fact. You know, people are comfortable mm -hmm. with sex sort of things, you know. So yeah, yeah, it's it's just how you're raised and the ideas that you're uh, sort of expected to have to fit in with a society, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah, and when you're just <laughs> mixing in like advertising and large sums of money, like anything remotely risky is going to be kind of frowned upon or nose turned yeah. away at. So you can kind of see why we're in this kind of state, but that's not to say there aren't plenty of films out there that do kind of openly ex explore sex in a more uh, kind of honest way or whatever, or however you want to put it like a short bus or whatever. Mm hmm. Yeah. But I, d I doubt we're going to see like a real sex scene in like an Avengers movie. No. Any, anytime soon. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I don't think so either. And Black Adam too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah That's funny. I need to think about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. All right. It would be okay, interesting like day. why the fuck not, you know? I I'd, I'd love to see something like that. I'm all, I'm like really just like <laughs> I am I am in so much of a point in my life of just like stopping giving a shit about so many things. And sex is this mm. one thing where I just see like, man, people are really fucking like <laughs> clutching their pearls over just like nothing on uh, a lot of this shit, you know, people yeah. are just it's weaponize it for no reason. And it's just like, OK, like we're human beings. Calm down. Grow up a bit. You're not four, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. that's how I feel. And so I'm just like, yeah, I would like to see something like that. Why not? Yeah, I think I'm with you. Yeah, there's enough weirdos out there who would like that. Yeah. And those Fifty Shades movies did well. Yeah. Yeah, so th are th would you like class those as... They like they basically are softcore Yeah, porn exactly, like right? People. Right, they kind of are. But they're not respected, you know? They're not like Oscar winning or... You know, no one's like pointing at those as like, yeah, those are... No one's coming out of the woodwork to defend them on, on like a narrative, like yeah, but they're competent. Yeah, it's not. They have more money behind them. There's there's more money in them than like an average like porno that you'd see. Well, here's probably. the thing. It's like I would like to see a film. You know, you could say Short Bus is one of these, but like, you know, a film that just treats sex in the same way that you know people treat other things that human beings do, like. I don't know, eating or, you know, like just, just like, why not show it sort of thing. It's, it's these characters are experiencing it at this point in their lives. Um, you know, we already, we already do that in ways where it's simulated. Uh, I think it would be interesting for a movie to do it unsimulated. And that would be like the only big difference. It would be, you know, tough to get people involved on that, obviously, but I think it would be interesting from like an artistic standpoint, something like 50 shades it just seems like a movie that's dishonestly parading as a film when really it is just explicitly to uh, induce sexual arousal in people. You know, like the softcore porn yeah. thing is just like, okay, you're a porn pretending to be a movie. That I'm not as interested in. Um, yeah. Whereas like if it's just like, oh, this this is what these characters are doing, then why not? Like if we're showing yeah. them doing other things. Is it like, just that porno movies are like associated with being just bad? Just like having bad writing and whatever. I don't and like, know. Yeah, I've, like yeah. Smut or 
Yeah, um, yeah. I can only assume as such, but I don't like all the porn I watch is like not <laughs> like porno <laughs> movies. It's just like artists. <laughs> artists drawing things yeah. so i just yeah. i have no idea what that world is like <laughs> i just have to imagine <laughs> yeah yeah there sure. is something hypocritical about how we're like we're so, we're more than cool with like violence and oh, like, yeah. watching people's like heads exploding guts and gore and all that all the all the intricacies that come with violence but as soon as things start getting a bit sexual yeah um, we, we get a bit funny about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's weird don't be prudes. <laughs> All right. Is there any more okay. on that topic? No, I think we can move on to this one from Anxious Futs. Hi, Ralph, Adam, and Alex. I was wondering if you've ever experienced something similar where a few months or a year after you watch a series or movie, unless it had a profound impact on you, you forget a lot about it. Sorry if this is dumb. I'm just hoping that it isn't me is all. Can you read that again? Yeah, I'm not sure what the that. question was. He's asking, like, what does it take, I guess, especially with how much just stuff we watch, like, how much do we actually remember from that experience? Because I don't know about you guys, but it has to be profoundly good or bad for me to remember a lot of details um, at a certain point. I don't know what, like... Yeah, the... I mean, I try to <laughs> I try to avoid disposable movies that are not going to leave an impact on me, but, you know, I do wind up seeing them... Mm -hmm. like, uh, occasionally so. yeah you can't help it <laughs> yeah because you're kind yeah. of just have to see what it's like sometimes um yeah but yeah those don't leave an impact and then great movies or fantastically bad movies do leave an impact it's not really it's not really too complicated i, I don't think yeah mm -hmm. and even then like there's a reason we'll re-watch a movie where uh we're even ones we're familiar with for like an episode of the show yeah. or whatever, because your memory is fallible. Yeah. yeah. And you need it to, you know, you need to revisit it to, I guess, either try to confirm whether or not your impressions of the film are still valid to the current day you. Or mm. yeah. because you're you have the film memorized, but you just want to experience again because you love experiencing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I have pretty good memory with films, especially if I'm really into it. If it's like really bad or really good, if I'm really into yeah, it, yeah, exactly. then I will remember it. Yeah. Like what you're saying, Alex. And yeah, like if it's really good, I watch it multiple times. I will just remember it at a certain point. And yeah. We'll just enjoy experiencing it again, or maybe watching it with other people, seeing them experience it, because that's always fun. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't worry, anxious futs. It's it's not just you. <laughs> Memories, especially if it's not something you really cared about that much. Like you barely yeah. remember like what was even happening two months ago, let alone like a movie I saw two years ago, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. All right, next question. Okay. All right. Uh, Histo12 has this to say. Hey, lads, any stories of funny slash interesting experience with psychedelics and movie watching uh, or just on their own? Um. Um, <laughs> no, I've never done those. I've never done psychedelics. How, well, I mean, weed can be like a mild, you know... Yeah, I think they mean like LSD and like, and like mushrooms, acid and that kind of shit. I did like so once in in was it uh was it college? Yeah, it was senior in college. And like there's some guy in the, my internship. He's like, I get you anything. I'm like, he get me mushrooms. He's like, yeah, and he got me mushrooms. <laughs> and I was gonna watch The Lion yeah. King mm -hmm. and watch it on mushrooms. I don't think I had enough though because I was kind of scared. So I like kind of nibbled at it a little bit. Sure. And I threw the rest of it out because I was scared. But I don't think it worked, mm. really. I remember just no, being okay. frustrated because I was, I was trying to watch it on my projector. And then, like, all my roommates are like, yeah, Ralph, we'll join you. We'll watch it together. And I'm like, okay, but I'm on mushrooms, just so you guys know. <laughs> I told them. <laughs> <laughs> but so they came in and they're like, Ralph, we don't like your projector. We want to watch it in, you know, the, the other room, my, my roommate's room. Because um, it's, like, separated. Like, mm -hmm. we all live in, like, a six-room. We all have our own suite. But it's like a six room kind mm -hmm. of room or whatever. Uh, so, like, we want to watch in the other guy's suite. 
I'm like, well, fuck you. I have to <laughs> move over and go to the other suite. <laughs> so we had to bring all my shit over and I was just so frustrated. And, you know, I might have been high, but I didn't know if it kicked in or not. And so it was a very frustrating experience. Lion King was good, though. <laughs> that was that was my experience watching Lion King, basically. Yeah. Um, and I've never done I've never done a psychedelic again. That's that's my only experience with psychedelics my entire life. <laughs> So if you're going to do psychedelics, whether it be mushrooms or LSD, you want to do it in a, a comfortable, positive environment exactly. with people that you know and that you trust. Um, it's better not to do it alone. Um, yeah, just that's having, why my friends came in. Yeah, just having other yeah, people yeah, there and too. like reassurances. But then I had to move. I had to move to the other room because <laughs> he had a TV. And so, yeah, there will sometimes be like... <laughs> Um, so I, I went through a period of my life where, uh, like I was doing psychedelics, but all of my drug use was like mostly just by myself cause I was like kind of depressed and stuff, but, um, mm -hmm. and I didn't have really a lot of great experiences with that. It just wound up turning into like a lot of, you know, exemplifying like self hate and insecurity and, yeah. um, sort of like putting a, uh, you know, turning that up to 11, which is, you know, probably not great. Um, but now I'm at a different point in my life. I'm, you know, a lot happier and healthier and I have a boyfriend that, um, I trust and that I love. And, um, so I'm doing, you know, I'm kind of returning to that world of, um, occasionally doing psychedelics. And, um, so, you know, having taken, you know, a large break from these things, sometimes I'll, you know, get an idea of just like, oh yeah, like this would be like a really trippy thing to watch. And so, um, you know, we were starting out uh, as on the come up of like an LSD trip um, with some people. And um, I put on Apollo 10 and a half, a space age childhood just because of the rotoscoping. And it was new, the Richard Linklater. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that thing. one. And oh, I was so like, oh, recent. yeah, it was like, <laughs> okay. it was such good vibes. But then like, like, I don't know, like 20 minutes through the 20 th minutes through the movie, um, there's like, I don't remember exactly, but like someone gets a phone call and it's about something like dark and serious and they like start crying and i was like ah we had to like change it to something else because like you don't want to feel those emotions when you're on psychedelics because it, it feels like you're you're too open to them and it influences directly how you're feeling um it's yeah and so exactly. and so you don't want to be in that dark place um they're, so they're we, really intense we wound that's up why putting like, on, i was afraid to have them yeah we wound up putting on gumball uh, and it was fucking awesome. Gumball is the... <laughs> yeah. If you ever need yeah. a comfort uh, piece of media to put on if you're doing psychedelics and you just want to be in a good headspace, The Amazing World of Gumball is fucking awesome. Um, not one a other climax? Suggestion, climax is Yeah, good maybe film. not climax. <laughs> um, yeah, no. One other suggestion. Um, there's a artist that I listen to that I've been listening to for a while called Wolfpeck, V-U-L-F-P-E-C-K. And they're a modern but like intentionally nostalgic kind of like seventies uh, sounding uh, band, and they did a live concert, um, and they filmed the whole thing on like an iPhone. It's like an hour forty minutes, and uh, it's the, the it's on YouTube for free. It's called Wolfpack Live at Madison Square Garden. If you're ever doing psychedelics. And you're coming up or, you know, into it or whatever, whatever stage of it you're in, put on that video. It is the most, like, positive vibe. <laughs> and just, especially if you like yeah. the music, it is just, like, one of the best, uh, just, you know, it feels, like, meaningful. And and uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. one of the best, like, things you could ever possibly put on for a trip is that concert. And they're just so talented. And, oh, uh, yeah, it was such, such great energy and vibes. Yeah. That made that that was a really good idea that I that I put that on. I'm glad I did. But I would, yeah, movies. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, as far as me, um, yeah, if we're talking about movies and not excluding weed, which I feel like, especially like edibles, they, I've had like so, what feel like psychedelic experiences. Um. On yep. those things. Um, oh, yeah. One of the first times I was fucking with them, um, <laughs> I was like with some friends and we put on the fucking, oh my God, we put on the Hitman's Bodyguard, right? Oh, no. Awful piece of shit <laughs> film. Um, and like, I swear to God, it, 
you know in um get out where he's like on the chair and he like goes to the other place and he's like sucked <laughs> into like the void i had that your- exact experience yeah and i was like i was like freaking out i was like what That's, yeah have i been like laced right now like is this is this, what the fuck is going i've never experienced this kind of stuff i don't know if it was like just too much or if it was <laughs> edibles the can that do that movie, yeah just like yeah it was a crazy experience um so that was like your dad's horrifying. Weed. It was it, there was like a certain <laughs> scene for people who've seen it. There's this like awful like scene that just doesn't end. You know, like sometimes when you're like high oh, on weed or whatever, it can make stuff feel like it's going on and on anyway. There's this scene where like Sam Jackson's in the car, of Ryan Reynolds like <laughs> singing, like purposefully singing bad on purpose as like a gag. But it like that, it like sent me, it sent me to hell. That movie. Um, <laughs> and I'll never forget that. Um, and I guess a more positive one would be like, uh, I, yeah, I, I think we had some like edibles and put on a fantastic planet. Um, I just like showed it to some people and it like really scared them. Uh, where, yeah. Um, sure. well, not like genuinely scared. They just kind of freaked them out cause it's such a weird movie and that, but that was a fun ass uh, experience. That's a good movie. Um, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. watch on in that kind of state. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and the full what what I mentioned earlier for people who are were trying to find it and can't, uh, the full title of Gumball is, is I think the Amazing World of Gumball. It should be on HBO Max. It's Cartoon Network stuff. So, just in case you're you were already uh, in the middle of an acid trip trying to find something just called Gumball while you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the middle of an acid trip, listen to Sardonic Cast. You can. I'm sure there's one or two out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Statistically, there's definitely. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. That's what I would do if I was tripping out. That'd be my comfort food. I would go on one of those, like, you know, uh, journeys into the jungle or whatever in, like, South America and go on, like, a, one of those, like, Oh, LSD like an ayahuasca or fucking uh, spirit yeah. journey? Yeah, yeah, they give you, like, oh, yeah, God, those like don't they give seem you ayahuasca. Yeah, with the drums and stuff. No. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, yeah, like a, it's like a guided, it's like a guided journey. I'll send you, oh yeah, I'll send you some videos. That, there's some of these things where they just like fucking start vomiting, and just like you're supposed really? to feel like, oh yeah, there's like depending on like what mm, well, kind yeah, of these things I you're guess doing. It depends who you are. Oh my god, yeah, it depends. It's not just who you are. Like some of these substances, and, like yeah. that's a part of it. Has to be trusted. Yeah, <laughs> they're like yeah, they're more of like a spiritual journey. <laughs> I was just, thing. I just saw it. I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. I don't I'm know. I'm not sure what like, the composition of ayahuasca is. Is it like a plant? Yeah, I'm not sure I either. Just, I'm sure I'm sure tripping outside can have its benefits. I like the comfort and safety of being indoors with just positive vibes and people I trust. So. Yeah, you just see people around you. That's like the appealing part yeah. of guided like meditation or whatever that is. You yeah. have people around you. Mm-hmm, exactly. Feel cozy. All right. Uh, okay. All right. We can do one more. What next? What are next? Okay. Then we can end on this one uh, from Rocket Salesman. I just read that Kevin Conroy, longtime voice of Batman in the Arkham games, the animated series, and several movies, has passed away. The loss hit me especially hard since I grew up hearing his voice in my head reading comics and stories. In light of the tragic news, I wanted to ask what are some of your favorite iconic actors who have now passed away? that you'll never get to see perform again. What made them so iconic? Love the podcast and rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. So yeah, yeah. it was sad for me. I grew up on uh, that animated series with mm. his voice. He'll always be the true voice of that character in my head to me, Mask of the Phantasm and all these great stories and yeah. games. So, yeah, I'm very attached to that voice. And uh, yeah, rest in peace, man. Um, I've never seen the animated series, but I just watched um, Mask of the Phantasm on Halloween. And I thought it was great. I really yeah, enjoyed it's it. it's genuinely really good, isn't it? Yeah, it was, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, super good stuff. Yeah, he's great in it. Yeah, he's, he is the voice of Batman. That's like in so many interpretations, even the video games, yeah, the Arkham games. Yeah. You know? So yeah, he'll definitely be missed. I mean, <laughs> he is Batman. He is the voice of Batman. Yeah, he'll always be mine, probably. Yeah. Just like Mark Hamill's the Joker. <laughs> yeah. But as far as like yeah. iconic actors, otherwise, I guess like Seymour Hoffman. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't have enough of a like personal association with the uh, Kevin Conroy stuff. Because I, you know, although I did watch the animated series when I was younger, like I just, 
I was so young that I couldn't even remember right. what the voice sounded like because <laughs> I haven't kept yeah, up yeah. with you know a lot of the animated Batman stuff since then. Mm-hmm. But what was I guess? Yeah, what was the question? Is just like the yeah, yeah. What are some of your favorite iconic actors who have now passed away that you'll never get to see perform again? I've said this before, but there is there is a hole that was left when Brittany Murphy died. She was so great at playing that type of character, and no one's no one's exactly fulfilled that, you know. Mm-hmm. I liked seeing her in movies. Do you have anyone, Ralph? If we're on the topic of Batman, I'd say Heath Ledger. I yeah, mm. I think I've I think we've answered this before. Yeah, yeah Heath yeah. Ledger's big one. Yeah, that's a good pick. Yeah, and the the Lincoln Park guy, Chester Bennington, I think. Those two hit me hard. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's it, though. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, we did it. Skadoosh. We did it. <laughs> um, Skadoosh. I think it's my turn to recommend a movie. Yeah. Is it yours or mine? Do I come after Ralph? Oh, no, no I think it's yours. it's Alex. It's mine. Because weren't you before? Weren't you before me, or was that? Oh, wait. No, is it yours? Did I yeah, miss? I think it might be mine. Okay, yeah, because yours was Revenant, wasn't it? Yeah, Revenant Boogie yeah, Nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to me, and then Big Lebowski. Oh yeah, yeah so sorry. Alex. I was looking at the um, the published ones. <laughs> oh man, on the thanks, YouTube thank channel. God we double checked. Yeah. We're getting oh, yeah. a bit early because yeah. we haven't published. Oh yeah, that but there's one. another okay. one. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh yeah. Well, Alex just did the Big Lebowski. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, we recorded this one early. Okay. I'm gonna be busy the next couple of weeks. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so, Alex. so I've got one of those <laughs> classic ones where it's a movie I've seen a long time ago. I'm not sure if you guys have. You probably have. Um, 2001. I think we've done another Cameron Crowe movie too, but I want to talk about Vanilla Sky. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. I haven't seen um, that in years. It, could, it might be an interesting <laughs> convo. Um, oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Very, uh, very strange movie from how I remember it. Um, so... <laughs> Are you aware that that's a remake? Because I'm 100% going to watch mm-hmm. the original if we're going to talk about it. Oh, that. there's a. Re- I didn't even know there was an original. Well, yeah, might as well, might as well throw yeah. that oh, in. Oh, yeah. So it's based uh, off of a. Yeah. yeah, it's based off of a Spanish movie. The Let's original see. is Open Your Eyes. Oh, yeah, awesome. Cool. Right? That's what's called Open. I think it's called Open Your Eyes. Yeah. The Spanish one. I've seen that one too. The Spanish one's better. Okay. Because I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen okay, either of them. So guaranteed I'm going to watch. Let's make it a double build then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Open Your Eyes, uh, 1997. And then I'll watch Vanilla Sky, 2001. So I haven't seen yeah. either of them. Okay, cool. Yeah. I just needed to make sure. Yeah, yeah. That should be fun. <laughs> like, I'm de- definitely yeah, yeah. watching the original. I saw that guy. years ago, though. Vanilla Sky. Yeah. I thought, okay. I, I saw Vanilla Sky first for sure, actually. Yeah, I didn't. The Cameron Crow connection—that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that should okay. be interesting. Right. Perfect. Yeah, yeah that, that should be interesting. So, okay, if cool. you would like to not be spoiled for, open your eyes. Directed by Alejandro Amenabar with uh, Penelope Cruz and some other people in it, 1997. And also, if you don't want to be spoiled for Vanilla Sky, 2001 film with Tom Cruise, directed by uh, Cameron Crowe. And it also has Penelope Cruz in it. That's interesting. Okay. That's She's right. in both yeah. movies. Oh, weird, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, then watch them before the next episode comes out. These episodes come out every two weeks. Uh, you can listen to them early by going to sardonicast.com, signing up for premium. It's only $2 a month. Also, patreon.com slash sardonicast. Uh and we've been, yeah, depending on our schedule, we might record some particularly early, so uh, you might get them pretty early if uh, you do it that way. Anyway, uh, we also got merch. Uh, buy some merch for Christmas. You know, Grandma's waiting for your Sardonic cast. Oh, she's waiting. Like, I've said it enough times, surely someone has to do it for the meme. To, to film themselves giving their grandma Sardonic cast merch. <laughs> make it happen yeah, someone post on the subreddit yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a Sardonicast highlights channel um, and I don't know if I forgot to mention anything but fuck it 
Listen to the other episodes. You'll figure it out. Yeah. And shout out to that animation. That oh, yes. Out too. Yes. So good. Yeah. yeah Zenny Leaves. Really good. Really good stuff. Good job, Dan Xmas. Yes. <laughs> Very fantastic <laughs> animation. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> on the Sardonicast YouTube channel, you can watch it. Uh, oh, yeah. Send us your <laughs> fan art. Uh, we will include the fan art at the beginning of the YouTube uploads. Uh, it's always good to have fan art. So, uh, yes, I love the fan on art. Subreddit or on Twitter, although no one ever sends it on Twitter. People post it in the subreddit. I, like no one ever does it on Twitter. Every once in a while, like once it's been a while. For Occasionally, sure. yeah. but it's, it's like yeah, it's like especially if now. you're gonna do it on Twitter, use the hashtag Sardonicast fan art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't just tag the account. Use the hashtag. So that I don't have to log into the Sardonicast Twitter account. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Thanks yeah. for listening, everybody. Um, happy Vanilla Sky. Happy Dirk Diggler. Yeah, take care, everyone. Hap- happy Boogie Woogie. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.